Yes, if you remember the veers from teams like Georgia Southern and Arkansas State, it's been a sore point. They gave up over 260 yards last week on the ground, so the defense is really going to have to step up big tonight. Run game important for both teams. We'll run to the sideline and John Killer and John. You know, Dan and James, another key factor for the Wolfpack. Plenty of players recruited right out of the L.A. Southern California area. Players like Brian Reeves, Michael Stevens, Will Lackey, Andre Howard, all going to start to see plenty of action tonight. And so apparently will quarterback Fred Gatlin, the senior from Compton, California, won't start. Chris Vargas gets those honors, but Coach Alt seems to think he'll put him in the game so he can get some exposure from where he played his high school ball. Back up to you guys. John, we're expecting a lot of offense tonight from the Wolfpack. We'll get things underway. We'll come back with a kickoff right after this. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Thank you. Picking it up loud. <clears throat> got okay. you loud and clear. You got it. All right. You got it. Fullerton Gene Murphy. Live in Lodge. Once again, welcome to University of Nevada football. We're at Titan Stadium here in Fullerton, California. In what, uh, James, today was somewhat uh, smoggy, but sunny California. You see Gene Murphy, who has uh, announced his resignation effective at the end of the season. He has been at the helm of the Titans for 15 years. But uh, after this year, he said no more football for him. Well, the weather was quite pleasant when we got here. And Murphy has uh, taken this program through a tremendous struggle over the past couple of years. But he feels that this is a time that He's gotten it to the point where it is, and he'll move on from here. Chris Alt across the way, uh, he was concerned. We flew down this morning, and coming uh, the day of the game, we had a long conversation on the plane about his concerns. He said, we are a good football team. We've got to prove it. Fullerton may not be a good football team, but they could give us all kinds of problems tonight. Arthur Davis is the single safety back about the goal line. Terralax kick end over end. Davis will take it at the 4, at the 10, 15, coming right side, 20. Broke a tackle, he'll be gang tackled and finally driven down at about the 27 yard line. Excellent kick cover that time by the Wolfpack uh, specialty team. That had been a sore point early in the season, but now they seem to have gotten all those kinks worked out and they feel very comfortable with the unit they have out there these days. Urban Cutright, who is normally the nickelback, comes in in the five back situation, also doubling on special teams, made the stop. Trendell Williams, not completing an awful lot of passes, but he is a run-oriented quarterback out of the wishbone. Full house backfield behind Williams. Going wide left, the pitch to the outside over midfield. Great carry, Jamal Smith, who is normally a wide receiver, in filling in at that right half slot. He took the toss, James, and he had plenty of running room to the left side. You can see that the uh, Smith was not listed as a starter, but he was in there in place of Frank Davis and got good running room. Robert Bedford uh, moved into tight end position when Jeff Williamson quit. Offensive line, some big people at guards, 285 and 295 left and right guard respectively. Titans with the second play from scrimmage and a first down across midfield. Williams sprinting out right now turns it upfield inside the 45. He'll go down at the 43 yard line. It was Steve Bryant who got there to make the stop. Bryant on the tackle. 
Nevada defense with the three big linemen. Joe Casper is the biggest of the three, but Jim Jones has played very well. Steve Bryant with 18 tackles last week. Lamont Porter leads the team with 50 tackles so far. Second down and about four for the Titans at the Wolfpack 43-yard line. Smith again on the ground. He'll go to the 40-yard line. Bryant got there first. Also coming up for a Duckett from his left corner helped out. But Jamal Duckett Smith kind of a surprise starter in the backfield, James. He's a starter that they're looking for some productivity from early in the game. Uh, Fullerton knows that they have to run the game against, have to run the ball against the University of Nevada, and they've come out here with their first couple of plays this evening, running the ball and showed that they can run it very strongly. We were talking about the makeshift defense. It's kind of a makeshift offense. The backup quarterback going to the defensive side of it. We'll see how deep they will go. Third down, less than a yard against Smith, left side. He'll jump. It looked like he got the first down. He needed to get to the 39-yard line. I think they'll spot it at the 38. Well, it's so essential in the wishbone scheme of things is that the quarterback can first read the, the, the defensive front seven. He has to read that first, first tackle to see if he's there with the fullback so that he can pull the ball out of his belly and go to his secondary read. And that time, the Wolfpack defended it very well, but they gave up the first down. It's going to be essential that they get down close to the red zone. Key element for the Wolfpack, too, is stop the run game. They have not done it well in the first four games of the season. Their record is even at two and two. Davis in motion. Williams rolls out right, throws on the break, complete to Davis, and he's out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Lamont Porter, the inside backer, coming across to force him out of bounds. So uh, Williams not afraid to throw, James. They have not thrown much this year. Well, they come with some turn back blocking to give Williams an opportunity to get outside, and that way you seal the lineman down inside. He excellent little rollout and hit the, the back in stride and the coverage by Brock Marion that time to run him out after a gain of five. But that's something the Wolfpack was not looking to uh, come forth early in the game was Fullerton throwing the ball. Yeah, they didn't expect the Titans to throw it much at all tonight, let alone early. Howard McCray this time is split wide left. Full house backfield. They give it to Smith, trying to turn the left corner. Got a good block. It's outside at the 30. Marion runs into him at the 25, and the, the two of them go all the way to the 20-yard line. Brock Marion, though, making initial contact, but good leg strength by Smith drove Marion backward. Well, this big offensive line is getting off the ball very well early in the game. If you look at what they're doing, they're sealing down on the pack off of the defensive line. They got the corner seal, and they were able to get the pitch, and he reads his block, gets out an excellent block on uh, Brock Marion, who able to get around the corner, get down to the 21-yard line. They have an excellent drive going here early in the game. They sure do. Another first down right at the Wolf Pack 20. No score. Titans with initial possession. Pitch it come right side of Davis, looking for running room, turns a corner, and he will go down maybe a yard gain or so. But Forey Duckett kept it wide. He would not let him get around the corner. And the Wolfpack filling from the inside, Martin Washington made the stop. That, that is good run support that time from the Wolfpack secondary, but that has cost them into, at some points earlier here in the season. But they come so run conscious coming up to support against the run, the teams have been able to get behind them with some deep passes. But an excellent job by Forey Duckett forced it from his corner position. Gain of maybe a yard as the ball is just inside the 20. Three wide receivers, this time left of the formation. Davis goes in motion left, and that's the way Williams will roll. On the roll, throws for the middle in the end zone. Banks can't hang on, a little too wide for him. Poli Banks was the intended receiver, and Urban Cutright had the coverage. Well, Poli Banks that time, he's lined up as a wide receiver to the right side of the field, and Williams is rolling out, you know, a short roll out to his left side to buy him some time to get away from the pass rush so he doesn't have those big defenders in front of him. He's only about 6'1", but that time he got out, found himself some time, and Banks just a little overthrown, a short receiver, and just right on his fingertips. James Nevada didn't figure on playing a lot of nickel back tonight, but I see Irvin Cutright is in there. Well, they, they, they felt that they had to come up and stop the run, but with Irvin Cutright in, they feel that he might be a little quicker on the angles to get to those backs on that option. Motion man is Danzy. As Williams drops the throw again, his arm is hit as he throws. It is incomplete, almost intercepted. Cutright had a hand on it. So that'll bring up a fourth down and obviously a field goal try. Excellent penetration up front by the Nevada front four. Jim Jones did an excellent job of penetration, able to come in from the backside and hit Williams on his arm as he just got ready to release it. If you follow Jones with a, just a power move and got his hand right there on Williams' right elbow as he was trying to come over the top. Okana will try the field goal. It will be a 37-yard attempt. He's made one of two this year. Noel Prefontaine, who is the punter, is the holder for the left-footed Okana. 
end of red high, but will it get there? No, it's off to the left. So the Wolfpack, they couldn't stop the run game. And when uh, the Titans went to the air, James, they couldn't complete passes. Their drive stopped, and Nevada will take it over at about the 20-yard line. Well, a strange coaching format right there. You take yourself out of what you've been doing well. They ran the ball. They ran from... They, they were running the veer outside. They were getting the corner sealed against the Wolfpack defenders. They had the linebackers and the defensive ends collapsed down inside, and then they changed and go to the running game. Chris Vargas leads the Wolfpack offense out. Chris completing just shy of 55% of his passes, and all last year he was completing better than 60%. Three wide receivers right. Holmes on the ground up the middle, met straight on at the 21-yard line and stopped there. I believe it was Haney who got to him first. Lorenzo Haney. Or Haley, rather. Holmes starting at uh, running back. Mike Sr. returning after a week off with injury. And the other three receivers, talented receivers, reads, leaves that core and catches. Second and nine for the pack after the one yard gain by Holmes. Blitz from the backside. Vargas is hit as he throws a flag is down, but I think we'll get an offside call, James. It looked like Dan Godfrey was way across the line of scrimmage before the snap. Godfrey didn't time, time up his, zip, uh, his blitz that time, but an excellent play call by the coaching staff of the Titans to come in blitzing Nevada, feeling that they had to get to the quarterback early, and that time they forced Chris Vargas to throw it before he wanted to. Godfrey is second in the team in tackles. He is the strong safety, but he will play at the line of scrimmage an awful lot. Psychological factor, if you recall last week, Tulane jumped off sides, got a penalty against the pack, but they went in and punished the quarterback, and it seemed to unsettle Chris Vargas just a little bit. Well, something that's unsettling. Eastern Washington, for many years in the Big Sky Conference, uh, kind of an also ran in the middle of the pack. They beat Montana last week. Today, they beat Weber State 32 to 14. Well, that's, they make tremendous strides in that program this year. Second and five after the penalty. Holmes got one yard and then the penalty. It'll be second and about five. Vargas to throw. His ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Jason Wells got a big hand up and knocked it down right at the line. That so often works as good as a great pass rush when you force a quarterback to throw before you want. And that's what you teach a defensive lineman, to get his hands up there. Vargas goes back in the pocket. He has plenty of time, comfortable pocket. They surround him around. But Jason just jumps up, puts his hands in the air, and gets, a, gets the ball right at the height of his jump and knocks it down, force him into a third and fourth situation. Titans put a drive together. It uh, came unraveled when they went to the air. On the ground, they were doing well. The Wolfpack trying to get out of the shadow of their own end zone. At their 26-yard line, Vargas looking right side, throws, complete at the stick, Singleton, but he'll be awfully close to the first down. Will he get there or not? It's going to be based on the spot, and I think it, all he has to do is get to the line, and it's going to be very close to where he spots. It looks like he has it from here, but an excellent pass, and that's what you spoke about in the pregame show, those three-step drops. That time Vargas goes back three steps. Singleton drives off the defensive back, turns. The ball is right there. Very crisp pass, very exact route. Singleton, one of the premier receivers for the Wolfpack last year. Remember, we talked about Eastern Washington just a bit ago. We were in Spokane last year. He caught four touchdown passes. James, he does not have a touchdown reception so far in 92. He had a career day that day at Eastern Washington. He had over 200 yards as well in receptions. Uh, very interesting situation here. You thought Chris Ault might want to go for this early in the game, uh, fourth and inches, but he elects to punt. So Steve Lester will come on, and Pulley Banks will be in single safety. Lester standing back at his 16. The sophomore averaging just under 38 yards a kick, and we have a flag down. Is it a delay of game? We're going to get a delay of game. Alt was expecting to uh, be able to draw to the Titans off, but very disciplined. We spoke about that earlier. The program gone through the, the changes that it has. The players coming in very focused and disciplined. They stayed their, their position on the field, forcing back five yards, and now they have to run. Both teams have had the ball here tonight on our KRNV, KRLW simulcast. We hope you will stay with us throughout the evening. No score. Clock moving towards 10 minutes in the first half. First quarter, excuse me. Lester just does get it off. Kick. Banks down at the 32-yard line, looking for running room back and forth, and will go to the 35. That'll be it. Good coverage good by the Wolfpack. So, once again, we have no score here at Titan Stadium at Cal State Fullerton on campus. We'll return with more after this timeout.
Ladies and gentlemen, the initials DB on the tight football moments are in memory of the late Dan Burns, Cal State Fullerton's former director of public safety. And the tennis for that tonight are Dan Dwight Judy, his brother Bob, and Tyler Burns. Let's go to the sideline and John Killer. Dan and James, one thing the defense talked about is staying within their assignments on the option. Uh, the couple of times the pack took chances on defense, they weren't able to uh, make the play. They gave up the big play. The defensive coach is stressing to keep their assignment tackling and, and try and close down those lanes. That's the problem they've had so far, James. Individual players trying to make the big play instead of staying within the unity of the team. On the ground, Titans again out of the wishbone, go up the middle across the 35 to the 36-yard line. That was Davis, Dan, just, Arthur Davis. Just trying to go with a straight dive right up the middle field. They can loosen up the middle of the pack. What they've been doing is pressing the corners. If they can get everybody confined inside where they can get their guards out on the linebackers, they feel that they can exploit the corner. Before we went away from that commercial, the punt by Lester was good for 44 yards and Poli with a three yard return. McRae again is wide right of the formation. Wishbone offense. Quick handoff, fumble. fumble Williams fell on. I think he was trying to get the ball Third quickly to Ryan. Williams. Ryan didn't take it when he went by him. And Williams had to go back on it. Let's see on our replay here on Karen V News for Reno. If that was a call. He tried to get it to Ryan, James. Steve what he was doing, he was trying to pull it back out. But Steve Bryant was able to get his hand in, in just as he pulled it out of the fullback belly and knocked it on the ground. Great play by Steve Bryant coming in from his outside linebacker. And Steve was in on 18 tackles last week at Tulane. 13 of them unassisted. The thing about Brian so far this year, he has forced two fumbles. That line he forced a fumble, unfortunately, for the pack. The Titans fell on. And that's their 34th fumble of the year. Third and 10. Williams straight back. Now we'll scramble. One to throw momentarily. He'll get to the 35, 36 yard line, maybe, before he's wrestled down. So this time the Wolfpack holds on three downs and out. Andre Howard made the stop. What Williams had played was a half roll quarterback draw. He wants to drop, drop back like he's going to pass, a little half roll, then bring it up the middle. But Andre Porter, Andre Howard staying at home. That time Williams brings it up, gets a block from the fullback, Ryan. But Porter staying at home, very present, and makes the play. Yeah, Porter got there first. I saw Howard on top, but it was Porter who got to the bottom of the step. So Noel Fontaine will punt to Reeves. Low kick will bounce. I don't think Reeves will get a chance. No, he will not to return it. But good roll inside the 30, all the way down to the 25-yard line where it'll be down. Nevada will start first and 10 at their 25. We have no score from Fullerton, California, with 7.49 to go in the first quarter. We'll return in just one minute. Sounds fine, I guess. Let us know, though, when you want to come out of a break, you want to go to John or whatever. Some, sometimes we'll wait a second or two to make sure that radio synced with us. So we're up here. We're not going to sleep. Okay. Once again, no score. We're still in the first quarter with 7.49 remaining. We'll pack with their second possession. Singleton is the wide man right of the formation. Reeves alone on the left side on the bottom of your screen. Holmes gets the call. Right side, he gets maybe to the line of scrimmage. He may have lost a yard or so. Defense, James, closing very quickly for the Titans. Looked almost like they were offside. Elizaro, the right there in the middle of the line, they had the 
the snap time perfectly, and Elizaro was right there with Vargas as he was passing off, and Holmes just really didn't have a chance. They were across the line of scrimmage before he could get his momentum and dropped him for a loss on the play. Their best tackler, their best man on defense made the stop. Haley, Lorenzo Haley, who is their weak inside linebacker. They'll give him to the line of scrimmage, the 25-yard line, so it'll be second and 10. Vargas to throw. Left side underneath to Reeves, completed the 31. He'll be dragged down at the 33-yard line. Godfrey got to him first. And then Joseph Vaughn on the assist. So Brian Reeves makes his first catch tonight. Came in with 27 in the previous four games. They'll mark it all the way to the 34-yard line. Well, this is something that Vargas needs to do, stick with the short passing game tonight. He's dropped back in the pocket. He takes his three to five step drop. Little timing pattern to Reeves. Reeves did a little look in route. He was there when the ball arrived. Turned it up, picked up eight on the play. Four wide receivers for the pack, two on each side of the line. Vargas again, three-step drop, throws a fly along the sideline. Stevens with a great diving catch. Michael Stevens makes the catch at the 36-yard line of the Fullerton Titans. He is a big play receiver, James. Great execution that time by Chris Vargas, reading what the coverage was. They come up, they got nine men on the line of scrimmage. He throws a fade route to Michael Stevenson down the left side. Michael has to lay out for the ball, but perfect reception by Stevens that time on that reception. So Nevada with a big play to the 36-yard line, first and 10. Again, we're in the first quarter, no score, 6.25 to go. Vargas to throw on first down. He wants to go for a bundle, going up top, going deep to Reeves, overthrown. Darius Watson with the interception. Darius Watson pulls it down at about the two-yard line. Mike Simmons that time got away with a steal. He had grabbed Brian Reeves by the back of the jersey as they were running down the sideline, and Chris Vargas put it up where Reeves should have been. And Stevens had him, Simpson, Simmons had him by the back of the jersey, but he drops back in the pocket. He has great protection from his offensive line. Just at the last moment, he gets a player coming in from the backside, but he hangs it out there. Gave the defense time to react, but Reeves would grab behind from the jersey, but a great interception at the end of that by Watson, and Fullerton will get the ball at the one. Well, Reeves was protesting as he came away, saying somebody was hanging on to me. He and Chris Alden, Chris Vargas conferring on the sideline. Simmons had grabbed him by his shirt tail about the 11 or 12 yard line and held him back from getting to that ball. The thing that Chris Alden's got to be concerned with, Chris Vargas, his starting quarterback, has been intercepted 10 times already this year. Not numbers you want to see. Titans at their one, first and ten. Brian, the ball throw, yeah. Quick opener on the ground will get it to about the three-yard line to give it to the fullback. That is Ryan, Tim Ryan, number 34, 5'10", 220-pound redshirt freshman. Gives him a little bit of breathing room. Well, what they want to do is just try to bang it out right here. They feel like they could get Ryan up in the middle of the line. That time he picked up three hard yards. The Wolfpack defense wants to be very stingy down here. And this is where you want to hold on offense and check inside the team. Second and seven. Titans again will go that wishbone all night long. It's a new offense for them this year. It's helped the run game, but not much in the passing game. Jamal Smith again tiptoeing through the line of scrimmage will get out near the 10-yard line. Brock Marion had to come up and make the first hit. But Smith not even scheduled to start tonight has played well. Well, that time they, they try to reverse counter, and Smith got very close to the first down. What, what happened was Williams comes out, tries to stick the ball in the fullback stomach, and wheels back around, and there's Williams right there. He hurdles over a couple of packed defenders and gets out across the 10, and they picked up a first down on him. Smith and uh, or making Smith the ball carry and Carey and Marion the secondary making the stop for the Wolfpack. Defensive line has got to find a way like they did in the last series to slow these guys down. Starting at their one out at the 11 yard line now first and 10. Fake the dive Williams will come turn the right corner and he will get to about the 14 yard line. Defense played that very well. Martin Washington wouldn't let him get wide. They stopped him before he could get any running room at all. Martin Washington played it perfectly as you spoke about. He did not allow him to get to the corner. Williams had to make a decision in a hurry, and the inside pursuit was there from the middle of the Wolfpack secondary, and he was brought down for a little gain on the play. Trendell Williams, 6'1", 205-pound junior. He redshirted last year. Coming into the game, he had 178 yards on the ground and 73 carries. Just about two and a half yards per carry. Got three that time. It is second and seven. Ryan again, left side. Not much Ryan running room at all. Gets it to the 16-yard line. That'll bring up a third and about five. 
4-19 to go in the first quarter. We still have no score. Big West Conference game, the opener in conference play for the Titans. The Wolfpack playing their second conference game, their first on the road. Andre Howard and Jeff Condra on the tackle that time on Ryan. Playing his position, playing very disciplined ball. Condra has been inserted into the lineup over the past couple of games and has performed very well for the pack defense. This time they come out of the wishbone with a spread formation, two wing backs and two wide receivers, and a motion man. Williams coming, pitching to the motion man. Davis trying to turn the corner. He'll lose yardage. Brock Marion was there, threw him back inside the 15 yard line. He will lose maybe two, maybe even three yards. Brock Marion with excellent run support from his strong safety position as Williams comes out and he's forced to pitch the ball to his trail man. But Brock Marion not fooled at all on the play. And he's right there as Davis get the pitch and Brock is there to force him into the sideline and throw him out of bounds with the loss on the play. Williams wanted to turn the corner, but Jim Jones was not, would not give ground, got a hand on him and pushed him wide. So Prefontaine will punt once again, and it'll be Reeves standing back at his 45-yard line. Left-footed Fontaine has to fake it. Now punts it because Xavier Carey was in his face. Reeves will take it right at midfield. He'll be surrounded and go down to the 48-yard line, but Prefontaine got away from what could have been a block punt. He's not had one block this year. He showed some agility in getting it off. We have no score in Fullerton, California. 3.38 left to go in the first period. We'll return in just one minute. Yes, hello. <laughs> yeah, we're coming out. Okay. And talk about it. Okay, got gotcha. you. See the sellers at the main interest of Ted Stadium. Thank you. James on a last play from scrimmage, uh, really a great move by Prefontaine to get out of trouble. He was standing in his end zone. The kick was going to be blocked had he gone ahead with it. Very alert play by the punter. He pulled it down as he saw Xavier Carey coming towards him, moved to the left, brought it back down, punted, and got his team out of bad field position, put the pack out about around midfield. At the 49-yard line of the Titans, Wolfpack first and 10. No score. Vargas to Holmes, turning the left corner. He's got some running room, lowers his head, goes inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. He dove under the intended tackle of Godfrey. And Holmes finally getting on track. Coming into the game, James, he had only 14 yards in those seven carries. And last year, nearly 800 yards on the ground. Led the team in rushing last year. And I know that you're very high on this young man, Holmes, a very, very fine young man. And it's time he got outside, got off tackle to the left, and was able to pick up seven yards. And it's good to see him get on track early in the game. Three wide receivers right on a second and four. Vargas on a delay to Holmes. The man to beat, he could not. He gets to the 42-yard line. But that defense staying at home. And again, it was Godfrey who made the stop. Well, Godfrey, along with Haley. Haley was the first man in to make Holmes change direction. Coming with a draw, that's something the pack hasn't used a lot this year, but a little draw, a little delay in the backfield. And Haley was right there in the backfield and forced him to go inside. And, the pack is coming in with some changes in their offense this evening. You're really not used to seeing a strong safety like Godfrey, number 35, playing right on the line of scrimmage, but that's what he's doing. Third and three now. Vargas, quick pass complete to Mike Sr. on the sideline and out of bounds. He'll have enough for the first down as he is close to the 37-yard line. But Sr. injured last week, did not play against Tulane. Comes into the ball game with eight catches, make that number nine. Well, Senior also has the pack's longest reception of the year, 43 yard up at Wyoming to open the game of the season. So he's a player that is capable of getting deep. He just needs some playing opportunity. Nevada certainly wants to get the run game going, and Chris Alt on the sideline with his arms folded, but he knows that he might have to pass an awful lot tonight, and it seems like the pack going to the air frequently on first down. Vargas again on a curl. Good throw, completion. Daryl King, we have a flag down at the line of scrimmage. King will go down at about the 22-yard line. 
what we're going to get is a holding penalty back at the line of scrimmage. But an excellent pass that time by Chris Vargas. He really put that one on the line. He drops back his offensive line, gave him plenty of time. He fires it right into Dale King, who had found a little crease in the seam. They're playing a very loose zone, Fullerton is, in the back end. And they were able to exploit it, but it's going to be brought back with a holding penalty. Nevada tonight, James, throwing a lot more on first down than they did last week against Tulane in the Superdome. They ran it 14 of 18 times on the ground, but they're really trying to mix it up and keep the pressure of that front eight of the Titans off their offensive line. Well, what they want to do is, like you said, keep the pressure off, and if they keep the Titans guessing, they just can't stack the line of scrimmage. We were told coming into the game that they would play a lot of eight and nine-man fronts, but if you're throwing on first down, you generally can only come with four or five guys. So with the penalty, it is still first down, but now it's an awful long way to go, about 23 yards to go for a first down. It's from the point of the file. Vargas will throw. Throws again on a curl through behind Michael Stevens. Stevens found a little seam. He was in front of Darius Watson. But the ball thrown behind him, he stuck, uh, stuck his left hand out, but uh, couldn't even get a fingertip on it. Well, that ball was poorly thrown that time. Uh, Vargas got a little pressure that time in the pocket from uh, Sandy Scott, the, the right, the left defensive end. He came in on his throwing side, but that ball was poorly thrown behind Stevens. He tried to adjust in the air, but it was just too far, too poorly thrown. When they took the ball after the punt, they started at the 49-yard line of the Titans. They're back at their own 48. Second now and 23 to go. Mike Sr. in motion, left side. Vargas with protection, throws ball batted away. Nice play in the middle, Lorenzo Haley. Haley got a hand on it and knocked it away. Vargas is locking in on his receivers. He's dropping back. If you look at him, he's following the receiver across the formation, and he's locked on him. And Haley can just react to the ball right there and get a hand on it. He's going to have to look his man off to come back to him because he will get some of those picked. Another penalty, five-yard penalty against the Wolfpack at the line of scrimmage. So let's see what Fullerton does if they make it a third and 23 or second and 28. Let's see. Well, the smart thing to do on this is decline this one because you still have them in a third and 23 situation and you need a big play to get a first down. You got to get at least 25. Got a glimpse of momentarily of uh, Gene Murphy, the head coach for Fullerton. He's got to be pleased. Chris Alton on the other side, like a, a caged lion walking the sideline, hoping his offense can find something and stop making mistakes. Third down and 25. Vargas, arm fake, wants to go up top for a bundle, wants to Daryl King deep. King, a diving attempt, cannot get it at a two-yard line. Vargas had laid it out for him. Joseph Vaughn had the single coverage, but King just couldn't get a hand on him. Well, Chris Vargas that time with a stop-and-go route, he was able to pump in the backfield and get Daryl King behind the secondary, but just on his fingertips laying out, excellent effort by Daryl King and excellent toss by Chris Vargas trying to get it out to him. Vargas a little exasperated as he goes to the sideline with his helmet off. Steve Lester will be in to punt. And remember, James, the Pack started this series at the 48 or 9-yard line of the Titans. They will have to kick now. A minus yardage drive. Yeah, it surely was. Lester hangs it high. Banks calls a fair catch. The ball bounces right into him, and he'll stay there. As boy, he fielded that ball very quickly. Good, quick hands. Well, we have no score. Two minutes remain here in the first quarter in Fullerton, California. We'll return in just one minute. Coming back with a band shot. Nothing, nothing ball game, James. A little bit surprised that uh, neither team has been able to generate a lot of offense? Well, uh, with Fullerton, you, you know they're going to try to ground it out on the ground, but you expect the pack to go to that aerial attack and be very successful. First and 10 for the Titans. 
Titans back to their wishbone offense. Williams pitching. Coming right side, that is Danzy. Steve Danzy found running room, comes to the middle of the field. He'll get all the way out to the 36-yard line. So Fullerton may be a little thin in certain areas, but Steve Danzy getting his first carry made the most of it. Excellent explosion that time by the offensive line coming off the ball. That was the essential part right there, them getting into the pack defender. So pitch to Danzy out to the left, reading his blocking, able to get out, get his shoulder squared up. Bounced off the first tackle, came back towards the middle of the field, being brought down by Xavier Carey at the middle at the end of that run out of the 36-yard line. A 24-yard carry for Danzy. Again, they go in their double wing. Danzy's a motion man, but the inside handoff will get it to the 37 or 8-yard line. Tom Tanksley that time in there with Ryan as Ryan got the handoff on just a quick hitter up the middle. They've tried that a couple times, but the Wolfpack defenders, the middle of that defensive line has been very alert tonight and be able to bring those down for a very short game as Ryan only picked up two on that carry after being hit by Tanksley. Tanksley, a 6'3", 245-pound junior. Again, they go with a wishbone. Williams pitches to Davis, coming right side, cut behind a block. He'll get just shy of the 40-yard line. Lamont Porter is flowing very well from his middle linebacker position. He was able to get to Davis after he got about to the 40-yard line. But Porter lined up about five yards off the ball tonight, and he's able to read and scrape and avoid those offensive guards. And he made him at the point of attack and dropped him for just a short gain on the play. He got him first, and Andre Howard kept him from getting to the 40-yard line. Brings up a third and just about six to go for a first down. Fullerton converting 25% of their third down opportunities. Williams rolling out left, sets up, throws. Got a man open, overthrew him. Poli Banks was down at the Wolfpack 40-yard line. He was overthrown out of bounds. So with 33 seconds left to go in the first quarter, the Titans will have to punt. Well, Williams is not a polished passer. Anytime, anytime he puts that ball in there, he's hoping that it gets to the point that he aims it for. Because he is not throwing it, he's just aiming it out there. But Banks was not able to climb the pole and bring that one in, and they're going to have to punt on fourth down. Reeves back at about his 25-yard line. Prefontaine looking at a 10-man front for the Wolfpack is Brian Reeves getting set for the punt. Fontaine hangs it high. It's short kick. Will bounce and roll inside the 25, inside the 20. Good roll inside the 15-yard line. He didn't kick it very far, but he kicked it high and got a very fortunate roll. Well, not much that Brian Reeves could do about that ball. That ball came down between the 25 and 30-yard line, and the coverage was right around the ball when it came down. Just took a great Fullerton bounce and put the back, the pack back in poor field position. But this is a chance that Chris Vargas really needs to get things untracked. He needs to bring the ball down the field and make some things happen. Fontaine will be credited with a 48-yard kick. His long this year, by the way, was 51. Well, he's a pretty consistent kicker that we've seen and a very headsy player at that. Vargas to Holmes, up the middle, not much running room. He stretches it out to the 14, maybe as much as the 15-yard line. But again, Dan Godfrey, the strong safety at the line of scrimmage. He was virtually in the Wolfpack backfield when Holmes got the ball. He plays more like a linebacker. The pack trying to run an inside trap that time, trying to get the guard Tony Lorenzi around. He was just not able to get out in front of Diedrich Holmes. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. 15 minutes of football down. We have no score from Titan Stadium in Fullerton, California. We'll return with the second period. The Wolfpack will have the ball in just one minute. Everybody within three yards. Okay. Right. Yes, I am. Yes, Kilogram. Hey, Dan, if you want to come down to me on that last play, and just about every time they're guessing run, they're putting every defensive player within about three yards of the line of scrimmage. It's even more so than McNeese State. Okay, I'll come to you as soon as we come back. Okay. All right.
Well, the Titans are stacking the line of scrimmage. A guy with a bird's eye view of it is our man on the sideline, John Killerin. John? Exactly right on that last play where Diedrich Holmes got minimal yardage. Every Fullerton defensive player was within three yards of the line of scrimmage. They're doing a great job guessing the run, and right now, because of that, they're able to put men up and stop the Wolfpack running game. Well, coming into this game, Fullerton did not feel that the pack could run on them. They felt so if you're gonna beat us, you're gonna beat us through the airways. So Holmes got two on the last carry of the first quarter. Second and eight, Vargas to throw, complete at the 20 yard line. Mike Sr. making his second catch of the evening. Now in the first quarter, we have no score. Total yards, Fullerton James with 96, the pack with 57. The yards passing, big difference. Nevada 47, Fullerton at one completion, but they have 91 yards on the ground. Nevada with just 10 in the first 15 that minutes. Is a, that is a telling statistic, Dan, that yards rushing. They've been cr controlling the football. They have kept the Nevada offense off the field. They're going to force Nevada into throwing the football because, as John alluded to, they're loading the line of scrimmage with 8 to 11 players. They're not worried about the run game. Also interesting, Fullerton in their four previous games has held the ball just about six more minutes than their opponent. They had 21 plays. The Wolfpack had 14 in the first stanza. Well, that's the reason why they haven't got blown out any worse than what they have with only the one victory this year. They've controlled the football on the ground. And other teams can't score when they've got it. Vargas on a quick count to Holmes. Met right at the line of scrimmage. Holmes may struggle for a yard or so. It's very close to the first down. The pack had inches to go, but Holmes with a major collision at the line of scrimmage. The Wolfpack had to really struggle to get this yard at the line of scrimmage because Fullerton came with 10-man front that time, and they hit Holmes right at the point of attack, but that extra twist right at the end of the run allowed Deidre to swerve right through between two defenders and pick up a yard and get the first down. Excellent power that time by Holmes. Mark at the 23-yard line, Nevada with a first and 10 from that point. We thought maybe we'd see Damon Lynch by now because the coaching staff said they wanted to get that redshirt freshman in the lineup, but Holmes has gone all the way at the run back position. Three wide receivers right. Holmes on a counter, running left, ran through a tackle, gets out to the 25-yard line. A little bit rough running in traffic, but he made the most of it on a quick counter. They did. A little, little power game they're trying to run. Holmes is best running between tackles, and that time they got a pull, that time from Anthony, the new guard who's filling in this week, inserted into the lineup, but Holmes is making the best of that and picked up three yards on that run. A very hard three, three yards earned that time. Anthony Valentin kicked his man out, and Holmes ran right behind him, saw the hole. So it'll make up, bring up a second and eight. Again, three wide receivers, right side of the formation. Vargas has to throw you heavy pressure. They knock him down. He unloaded it to an area and just, I think, threw it away. John Hayes that time coming on a blitz, untouched from the linebacker position. They've come all out at Vargas every opportunity they've had this afternoon. This evening they've come out on the run, and that time they blitzed on a pass, and Hayes just came untouched. He was right in Vargas's face after three steps, and he just had to unload that, and he threw it behind Reeves and got a very unwarm welcome from Hayes on that. Obviously, Fullerton has looked at the films and knowing the Wolfpack can not handle that heavy pressure. And I expect, James, that they'll come with even more pressure as this game goes on. Third and still long, third and eight for the pack for a first down. Vargas drops, has a little bit of time, throws wide to Reeves. He's got the catch at the 29. Cannot get around this man. He's thrown out of bounds by Simmons. Mike Simmons had him high Simmons. around the shoulder pad area, and Reeves tried to duck under him, could not. Well, that time again, they, they backed off, they showed blitz and backed off the end. Vargas had to make a long throw that time to get the ball to Reeves. He had to put that one in the air, 35 yards, and Reeves got there. But Simmons, a big defensive back at 200 pounds, just took Reeves and manhandled him out of bounds. Lester, to punt for the Lester will punt again, and Banks is standing back at his 27-yard line. Lester with a 44-yarder the first time out and 41 the second time. Good snap. He hangs it high. Let's see if he gets a good roll. Short kick that will bounce and roll laterally across the 40, inside the 35, and will stop at about the 32-yard line. So, still the same thing. No score from Titan Stadium here in Fullerton, California. The team's working in the middle of the field. Nobody in the end zone yet. We'll return after this commercial timeout. penalize them. Billy 
Going right along. When you've got this much excitement, this much scoring, it's easy to miss. Jeez. I'm waiting on some no to get here by half time. What, you fell asleep? Waiting to score. Huh? Oh, you had to get in line, in other words. <laughs> Take a number. <laughs> you had the gun in your hand. It started as pistol. Well, we had a penalty on the punt. It was an illegal block by the Titans. So they add that to the Lester punt of 40 yards. And uh, Fullerton will be back, James, at their 12 yard line. Well, they, I'm sorry, 17 yard line, make it first and 10 from there. Well, they haven't had the greatest of field position all night long, but they have been able to hold on to the football. When they've gotten the ball, they've been able to pick up one or two first downs every possession. Wishbone offense. Davis over the right side, some good running room over the 20 to about the 24 yard line. Arthur Davis came in with uh, 32 carries, 107 yards, averaging about 3.3 yards per carry. That time he'll better that a little bit, about five yards. That, that time with a, a lead dive and Davis a third back through, and he was had the blockers in front of him, able to pick up seven yards on the run before the pack could bring him down. Trendell Williams, quarterback, going all the way so far. Again on the ground. They come to Danzig, trying to turn the left corner. Marion is up quickly to throw him behind the line of scrimmage back at the 21-yard line. That's one thing that Brock Marion for a strong safety, much like Godfrey from the Titans. He is across the line of scrimmage and in the running back's face. Converted from a cornerback last season, they, they, they felt he was the best hitter in the secondary, but a great read that time on Danzi as he's trying to get outside. And Marion comes across the line of scrimmage with help from Lamont Porter and drops him for a loss of a couple on the plate. So that was Danzy with Wolves dragging from him, right? Dancing with Wolves. Danzy with Wolves. Third down. And about five as Williams sprints out right. Trindell throws as he's hit. It's out of bounds. Danzy was the intended receiver. Trindell Williams is still down, James, at about the 12-yard line. Excellent hit that time from Andre Howard coming up from his inside linebacker position. Andre got the start tonight at the linebacking spot. That time he ran right through Williams, the quarterback, as he was trying to deliver that pass. Williams will get some breathing room on the sideline, take a big deep breath, and hopefully put himself back together because you're right, Howard did lay a lick on him. Well, the Wolfpack defense also came up with a big series, stopping the Titans without getting the first down, forcing him into a punt from poor field position. Prefontaine came in the ball game, averaging 41 and a half yards a kick. He's right at that average tonight. Boy, that one he hangs high. Reeves will call a fair catch and take it at the 36-yard line. Still no score, 12.03 to go here in our simulcast. Stay with us, we'll be back. The Wolfpack will have the ball on offense when we return in just one minute. score with uh, 12 minutes and three seconds to go but we have had a, a lot of punting tonight seven punts four for the Titans and three for the Wolfpack well this is not what we expected when we showed up down here this early this morning we did not expect to see a no scoring game of 12 four minutes into the second quarter Wolfpack faithful they got a pretty good crowd here tonight about 450 we were told Vargas on first down oh he'll be sacked back inside the 30 yard line he was looking for 
is wide receiver Stevens. Stevens was on the right sideline, but uh, people got around Vargas's ankle before he could get rid of it. Lorenzo Haley coming with an outside blitz from his linebacker position that time was able to get under the block. He came in just from the bottom of the screen and he grabbed Vargas by the ankle. Uh, Holmes tried to bring him, block him away, but he just couldn't drive him off. And Haley with a great underneath surge dropped Vargas for the loss on the play. He was on the ground when he reached around to grab Chris and brought him down. Loss of six, it'll be second and 16. Middle screen complete to Reeves at the 30, looking to get outside at the 35, cut back, goes high in the air, and he banged down at the 39-yard line. Reeves was looking for a little seam somewhere to get some running room. Godfrey again, Godfrey's been very active. The thing about the middle screen, the reason why they bring Brian Reeves back so close to the line of scrimmage, because if he's behind the line of scrimmage, the offensive lineman can go downfield without being illegal receivers because he's caught the ball behind the line. And he's able to utilize his blockers once he's caught the ball. But Godfrey has been very active this evening, and he brought Reeves down after a good gain on the play. You can see why on a replay why Godfrey is second in tackles on this team. Vargas will throw again. Quickly to Reeves at midfield. He is dragged down. Godfrey again on the spot gets him, but Reeves will have enough for the first down. He'll be in Titan territory at the 48-yard line. I've been impressed with this Godfrey young, young man this evening. He has been all over the field. He has hit everyone he's seen, and that time he was right on top of Brian Reeves. And Godfrey is not a small man. He is 6'1", six, six 215 pounds. That hoping they can move it for a score. We have no score with uh, ten and a half minutes to go before halftime. Defense jumping around. Holmes looking left comes back right. A flag down at the line of scrimmage as Diedrich Holmes will lead forward to the 46-yard line. Look like they might catch the Titans offside. Look like someone might not have gotten back. They had three or four players jump at the line of scrimmage. And you saw a few move back, but one was caught in that neutral zone. Going to be a break for the pack. We'll set him up with a second and five. One thing that Fullerton will do, James, and we'll hope to catch that on camera they will use an awful lot of people they will play situations and they're down linemen they will use seven or eight of them interchangeably on the defense well you keep players fresh that way you don't get tired and with the schedule that they've played they've played they've played a lot of big teams and they felt that it's to their advantage to have interchangeable players that can compete with each other they'll take the penalty instead of the homes run so now it'll still be first down this time it's first and five at Fullerton's 44. Vargas fakes a dive, rolls out left, throws on the run for Reeves. It's wide of Reeves, incomplete. Brian made a diving attempt, but Vargas led him too much, and he just couldn't get there. Vargas did an excellent job that time to bootleg a little changeup. It's not a big play in, in the pack offense, but a changeup against this Fullerton. Since they're coming with such heavy pressure, that time they got the defensive line pinched down inside. Vargas comes with the boot out to the left, and he just overlaid Reeves going on an out route about 12 yards deep and uh, going to put the pack in a second and five situation. David Bruniger, who had outside containment, came in. When he came in, Vargas had the, uh, at least the, the, the sight to see outside. Fumble on the draw, and it's recovered by Jason Wells. Wells will get it. It was Damon Lynch, his first carry. Wells comes up with it, and the Titans take the ball away from the Wolfpack. We still have no score from Southern California. 9.53 to go before halftime. The teams are playing in the middle of field. Let's see if they can generate some offense. We return in just one minute. Such language. Such language. I think it's quite essential. You know who's scripted? Match begins at 7:30 p.m. It was Lynch that fumbled the ball. Okay, I want to make sure you're trying to see who's stripping. No, it was Damon. Lynch and. Yep, it's 20 That's what. Yeah, Lynch and Damon. 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 Yeah, L
unfortunately, his first play of the night would not be one he'll want to remember. No, Dan Godfrey, the most aggressive player for this Fullerton defense, met Lynch right in the hole and stripped him of that on his initial carry of the evening. Not a, uh, a big welcome into the game for Damon Lynch. Titans with good field position, first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. Full house backfield behind Williams. He fakes a dive, rolls out right, wants to throw. Now wants to scramble back left side. He's got some running room if he can turn the corner. Straight arms a man and is chased out of bounds. It was Will Lackey who knocked him out. But remember, Williams left the field after being crunched down at about his 12-yard line. I wasn't sure he was going to come back in, but he looks okay. Andre Howard had leveled him on the last series, but William Lackey, great reaction coming from his secondary. Williams is rolling out to the right, trying to buy some time. He just could not find a receiver open down the field. The Wolfpack defenders stayed in all their lanes in that time, not allowing him to come upfield, but he brought it back against the grain. But great reaction by William Lackey coming from his corner position to force him out of bounds for a loss on the play. Well, that young man on the sideline took a lick. He didn't have a uniform on. They'll lose one. Second and 11. Davis in motion. Handoff inside. Was it a fumble or not? It looked like Eric Gamble got his first carry. It was Gamble. Gamble number 48 with his first carry, and he had no running room at all. Well, Steve Bryant was right there in the hole to meet him for no gain at all on the play. Steve Bryant has been a, a mainstay in this pack defense the past couple games. Very pleasant surprise this season. Was a backup the first two years of his career to Matt Clafton, but he has emerged as a player in his own right. Came to the Wolfpack quarterback in high school. Yeah, he, at Reed High School. And he tried, he bounced around between a couple different positions, but he's found a home at outside linebacker, and he's been one of the most pleasant players on the defense this year. Fullerton with their seventh, seventh opportunity on third down. They've converted one so far. Williams sprints out left, throws, juggled and caught by Davis at midfield, and then bounced out of bounds. He'll be short of the first down. Lamont Porter and William Lackey were over there. Arthur Davis, though, with a juggling act in midair. Williams that time rolling out to the left, finding some time to get the ball to Davis. Davis ran a square out route coming out of the backfield. Juggling act, as you said, right at the end, but bringing it in with great concentration. William Lackey forcing him out about a yard and a half to two yards short of the first down. Big play decision right here and look like they will go for it. Titans have not gone on fourth down yet this year. But expect them to try to get outside to give the quarterback the, the pitch run option. They're going to try to get out on the corner. At the 48-yard line of Nevada, fourth down, fourth and two in front of the homecoming crowd at Titan Stadium. They're going for it. Long count. Yeah, they were, they were trying to freeze the Wolfpack, trying to get them to jump off side. They did not, so they still have not gone on fourth down. Prefontaine will come in. He will punt for the fifth time tonight. This young man could have a sore leg by the time this evening is over. Prefontaine has been their biggest weapon because he's kept the pack in poor field position for the most part of the evening. And until they can get on track, they're going to have to do something about this specialty team game. He's much like the uh, the kicker last year for Boise. Kick everything high, not deep. Let it bounce and see if it rolls. Mike Black, Black, remember him? Left-footed Prefontaine, end over end kick. Reeves will have room to return it from his 14-yard line. Trying to go wide left, looking for the picket line. He'll go down at about the 15. Just couldn't find the running room. Good coverage by the special team for the Titans. Excellent coverage by the special team. But a big thing with Prefontaine, something the pack receivers uh, return men have not been accustomed to seeing, is a left-footed kicker. That ball is coming out differently from what you would normally see in the past. Let's go to the sideline and John Killer. Yeah, I tell you guys, right down here, you look at the offense and the defense when they come off, and you try and check whether they're having team meetings or not. The defense really not meeting. I feel that they think they're getting the job done. Offensively, you've seen the team meetings. They're really trying to find a flow and, and a way to get the team going here offensively. It's, it's hard to believe it's a scoreless game. Holmes is back in on the ground. He will get out to the 19-yard line. We talked about that before, that Damon Lynch was going to get some playing time, but maybe the coaching staff thinking that he might not be ready. Well, they, they were really hoping that he's gotten to the point. They felt he had an excellent past couple of weeks in practice. They thought they could get him in this game against the Titans. And he would be that big play back they've been looking for. They feel that he's probably their quickest back with some size on the team. Vargas completing about half his passes tonight. He came in with a little better than 54%, almost 55% on the year. Second and five, Vargas throws quickly to Mike Stevens, who makes the catch, bounces off two tackles, and finally spins down just shy of the 30-yard line. It looked momentarily like the Stevens 
I think got bounced off the tackles. Jane May ricochet for more yardage. But Stevens did an excellent job. Quick three-step drop by Vargas. Look in route. Stevens is there on the curl in. Breaks the first couple of tackles, but the pursuit brings Stevens down uh, at about the 30-yard line. But we're going to get a personal foul penalty on the pack here at the end of that play. Very unfortunate break for them. Just excellent downfield hustle by the offensive lineman Anthony Valentine from his guard position. Hit one of the Fullerton players at the end of that after Stevens was down, and it's going to cost the pack dearly on this. Half Mike, the distance to the goal. Mike Gullo was the one uh, Gullo who made the stop. First time we got a chance to mention his name tonight. And you're right, James, because it uh, gave the Wolfpack enough for the first down. So if the play was over and it was a dead ball foul, first it'll still be first down. But it'll be first and 25. At the exactly. The pack has not been able to sustain many First drives this year. And this is the type of thing that has killed them, penalties. Uh, it's hard to knock the young man because he was hustling when he got that penalty. But it's still, you got to have your head in the game at all times. So Nevada with four wide receivers, three to the left side of the formation, one to the short side of the field. Vargas drops to throw. Hesitates, now throws underneath for Stevens, who came back to try to dive for it. That's incomplete. It'll be incomplete. Good coverage again by Vaughn, who had given ground but closed quickly on Stevens. Well, Vargas had a lot of pressure in his face that time, and just as he got ready to deliver that one, he was met by one of the Titan players, but he got he just didn't get enough on that ball, and Stevens came down out of bounds. He made the reception, but he came down out of bounds, and that's why it was incomplete on that play. James, on a replay, you could see it was big Joe Elizondo, the 6'1", 290-pound nose guard who was right on Vargas. The other thing about Vargas tonight, he has been picking up his primary receiver and locking in on him. The defense has been roaming the way his eyes go. They can roll with him when he locks in early. That's been his problem the past couple of weeks. Left side throws complete. That is Reeves, who will get to the 25-yard line, a little possession pass for Nevada. Guliano again on the tackle on Reeves. And Vargas got the ball to Reeves early, but the great reaction by the Titan defense. They've been able to flow in, and the problem is, as you pointed out, he's locking on his receiver. He needs to look right when he's going to throw left, freeze the defense, allowing the, the receivers to get open without the coverage flowing to him. You can understand now why, James, with Reeves catching five passes tonight, the Titans have been in those big ball games against UCLA and Georgia. They just give ground grudgingly. Third and 14, Vargas again to throw, looking right side, throws. Singleton has to wait for it at the 41-yard line, but does make the catch and goes out of bounds. He will have enough for the first down. They needed to get to the 39-yard line, but look how long Chris Singleton had to wait for that pass to get to him. He did. Chris Vargas looks like he might be hurting a little bit. He's taken several shots this evening, and that time he had plenty of time from his offensive line. He had to hang that one out. He couldn't get much on it because the pressure was there on him. And Chris Singleton had to wait, almost fair catch that one, as Elizondo again was on top of him as he released the ball. The big guy a little bit late getting there, but he got there. On a quick count, we have a flag down. Wolfpack, I think, will be called. The right side of the Wolfpack offensive line jumped a little prematurely that time. You can see the frustration with Chris Vargas. He felt he had a play call that would victimize the defense. They had a counter call. And Vargas was a little upset on that offside penalty. Vargas holding that left wrist. That's where Elizondo, I think, after we just saw in our replay, on our KRNV News for Reno replay, that the previous play, James, the Elizondo banged into him. And I wonder if that thing is going to tighten up at all at halftime because he looked like he was in some pain. Well, fortunately enough, that's not his throwing wrist. The left one, you know, it could affect him on taking the snap, but it, it shouldn't affect him at all when he's throwing the football. Nevada with their fifth penalty of the night. Now it's first down and 15. 6.45 to go it before halftime. No score. Good throw complete to Mike Sr. right at midfield, and he draws a crowd. Anthony Valentin again coming in a little bit late, but he stepped away from Godfrey. He made contact and then backed off right away. He didn't wear another yellow handkerchief. Well, the young man is hustling, but Chris Vargas was hit once again by Thomas Kale, a backup defensive lineman coming in. And just as he released the ball, he's been hit several times this evening. Kale slings him to the turf, got a little warning from the referee, but threw a nice strike to Mike Senior to put him in a second and short situation. Diedrich Holmes, the lone running back behind the quarterback, Chris Vargas. Two wide receivers left. Vargas drops to throw again. Finds Stevens at the 40-yard line. He fumbles as he's hit. It's picked up by the Titans. And again, Nevada, when they looked like they had a drive alive, they cough it up. Al Witten came up with a bouncing ball. 
And the frustration is showing on Chris Vargas' face. He got the ball to Steven Stevens that ran an in route that time. It was stripped of the, of the ball, but Witten was right there, Johnny on the spot, able to pick it up. Chris Vargas drops back, tremendous pressure. They're blitzing all out against him, but he throws a perfect strike to Stevens, and he's stripped at the end by Vaughn, and uh, Witten was able to pick it up for the Titans. They have the ball at the 47-yard line. Then it was Diedrich Holmes who had a couple come up to make the stop. Last time they got the ball on a turnover from the Wolfpack at the 44, this time a little better field position. Danzy coming left side. Cuts against the flow, gets to midfield before he's pushed back. Marion got a hand on him and slowed him down. So Danzy will get about four. What they're doing, it takes a lot of a, out of the defense when they have to run from sideline to sideline. And the pursuit of the Wolfpack sec, uh, linebacker and defensive line court is having to run from sideline to sideline. Porter is fighting through congestion there. Brock Marion having to come up. Andre Howard is having to clean up along with Dwayne Sparks. But that wears down the defense when you have to run from sideline to sideline. Williams only completing two passes so far. After this play, I want to talk about another Porter, the center. Davis on a pitch he wanted to throw. Now he'll run to midfield where that's about his forward progress. But Arthur Davis wanted to throw. James, you've been talking about Lamont Porter, the inside linebacker from the Wolfpack. But David Porter, who is the center for Cal State Fullerton, is getting on those linebackers. He's getting out and getting on them. They, they've had done an excellent job. And Porter is coming right off the ball. They, the, the pack needs to put a defensive lineman on to at least chip him to protect your linebackers because they have to flow so much to get to the ball. Unless they slow Porter down, he's having a big line, big night slowing down the pack linebackers. Condra, Marion, and Howard make the stop. But it looked like Davis wanted to throw back to his quarterback, Williams, who had gone back on the left side of the formation. William Lackey had stayed at home and disrupted that play. Titans third and eight. Williams. Rolls out left, throws, juggled in midair, and is an intercepted, a diving attempt. Did they get it? It'll be Lamont Porter if the interception stands. Yes, Porter took it right off the top of this natural surface. And again, Williams James upfield, Trindell Williams, very slow getting up. Great hustle that time by the pack defense, and linebackers in the secondary. Porter that time coming from his inside linebacker position, and you see. Andre Howe at that time rushing the pass, but William Lackey made a great break on the ball at the end, allowing that ball to bounce freely in the air, but Lamont Porter with great hustle from his inside linebacker position picked that off shoot, shoot top high. You could see why Williams got up slowly because Howard got into him first and Jones fell on top of him. They've become very well acquainted this evening. On the ground, Holmes running in traffic and dragging people with him over the 45-yard line. The pack running a counter that time, pulling the left side of their offensive line. Holmes reading the block and trying to cut back underneath the flow. Just a step short that time because it seemed like the hole was there, but he was caught by one of the defenders coming back underneath. But exit move by Diedrich Holmes that time, trying to pick up some extra yardage. Holmes with nine carries tonight and a total of 28 yards. Excuse me, 23 yards. Motion man to the right side of the formation is Reeves. They give to Holmes coming right side. Now turns his shoulder over midfield to the 48-yard line. Holmes running with good velocity, ricocheted off a couple people until Mike Simmons got him and brought him down. Well, the key to that play was the hustle we talked about from Anthony to the guard. And Anthony Valentine that time getting out in front of Holmes, allowing Holmes to get around the corner. And Holmes with tremendous leg drive that time, running through tacklers that time before Simmons could bring him down after he picked up the first down. Again, the Wolfpack has had trouble establishing the run game. 3.30 left to go before halftime. We still have no score. Again, Holmes with a carry up the middle. Good, strong running inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Remember, James, Nevada had 10 yards on the ground in the first half. They the did. The first quarter, excuse me. And that time, Ryan O'Donnell, the center, did a tremendous job of getting up on Lorenzo Haley, the middle linebacker, opening up that hole, that hole for Holmes that time. He got off the ball cleanly and was able to seal off the middle linebacker and allow Holmes to pick up four yards. Reeves is wide right. King is wide left. Holmes the eye back. Double tight end offense for the pack. Vargas wants to throw a fly to Reeves. He was grabbed on the shirt. And Reeves will protest it. He will protest the call. The official didn't see it. If we had an ISO, we will see it. Reeves was grabbed from behind by Vaughn. 
as he had beaten his man. Joseph Vaughn is a very canny player. That is the second time tonight he has done that. If you recall earlier on the interception at the one yard line, that Vaughn was able to get a hand on Reeves, and this time he does it again. He's able to get away cleanly. He grabbed Reeves about five yards from where that ball drops freely, but the referee was shielded off, and he knows how to do it with his inside hand because the referee is on his outside. He had a lot of uh, Reeves' jersey. We didn't get a chance to see it, but it was obvious from up here. Third and six for Nevada at Fullerton's 43. Stevens makes the catch, still on his feet. He fumbled the ball, it's loose, and the Titans will have it back. It looked like Poo Jenkins Poo got Jenkins. on it. It was Broderick Poo Jenkins who came up with the fumble after Stevens caught the ball. We have no score. Two minutes and 36 seconds left to go in the first half. We'll return to Titan Stadium in one minute. How many turnovers in the first half is that from the pass? Uh, that's the blonde guy. One that shaves his legs. Oh, gosh. I mean, they're whipping hands up and down the field tonight. A lot of crying babies tonight on this flight. This game goes either way. Hey. A battle for their life now. What? Yes, I got you. That happened. Titans get it back after another Wolfpack miscue. The Wolfpack has turned the ball over four times here in the first and second quarter with 2.36 remaining. Have been a very sloppily played first half. The Pack is going to have to find a way to hold on to the ball. They just can't live and turn the ball over that many times. New quarterback, Quincy Guy is the quarterback. Danzy comes left side as he turns the corner and gets maybe a yard. But Quincy Guy is the quarterback. We expected to maybe see him in the secondary. He is 5'9", 180 pounds sophomore. Well, they ex they're trying to get a new infusion into their offense and they're making a change. They've been sluggish. They have not sustained any drives and they figure with Guy coming in, some fresh legs, a new attitude, that he might get something going here. I wonder if Nevada's gonna do that with Fred Gatlin. Well, it, it might not be bad to try to inject Freddie Gatlin into the lineup. He made some things happen late in the game last week at Tulane. Davis running right, oh boy, what a collision. What a collision as Lamont Porter came up. Davis looked like he had some running room to cut back left, but he didn't get anywhere because Porter was in his face immediately. Lamont Porter being free to flow that time in his linebacker position, read the cut back of Davis perfectly and was able to meet him in the hole and dropped him right on his back. That's the type of play you expect from your middle linebacker. Lamont Porter filled that hole perfectly. Davis got some uh, plus yardage, but he really paid for it. Now he got some plus pain also, but Lamont Porter has done an excellent job this evening. In the last series, he came up, series he's came up with a big interception, that time with the big hit on Davis. You know what's surprising? You're talking about a Fullerton program, a football program, spending $1.3 million. They're in trouble. They don't have enough money. The way this team is played, you wouldn't think that they were in financial difficulty at all. Players don't think about that. Well, it's what we spoke about in our pregame show. The players come out here with an attitude to play football. They're not concerned about the financial troubles of the university whether the football program will be here or not they want to play now reminder tomorrow afternoon with john killer and coach uh, chris alt will be there you'll see running with the pack and they will dissect and analyze this game tonight it's all on krmv news for reno tomorrow at 5 30 running with the pack every week john killer is your host well, they, they've been running this evening. They haven't passed the ball that well, but both teams have tried to establish the running game. You knew that Fullerton coming into this game was going to be a predominantly running team, but the pack has been surprising as much as they stayed on the ground tonight. Quincy Guy will remain at quarterback, and James, we have to go back to the couple licks that uh, Trindale Williams took. Maybe he's on the sideline, maybe injured. That's why we're seeing Guy. Andre Howard leveled him on a couple occasions. Guy a little late coming away with a snap that makes positive yards yardage as he breaks a tackle and gets to the 45-yard line. Picked up a first down on that broken play. 
we were told the scouting report was that guy when he came in on the option he would keep it he would not give it up very much and I can see if he gets loose he's going to be tough to contend with well he had a problem with the snap that time exchange from center and he fumbled right behind it and it disrupted the defensive scheme the defensive players were in the flow and he saw they'd gone past it and brought it back underneath inside and picked up the first down Guy fakes a dive on the option, turns a corner right. He's over midfield and spun down at the Wolfpack 47-yard line. He's got good, quick feet. Martin Washington, the outside linebacker that time, brought him down after that game. Titans take a timeout with 1.15 remaining in the second quarter. They want to preserve the clock. We have no score. James, I was talking earlier when, uh, during that last break about the Titans and their problems financially. You know, their budget is equal to the Wolfpack, and uh, they're struggling down here to keep their program alive, and the Wolfpack just starting to make things happen as they move into the Division 1A. Uh, obviously, they'd like more money, but they're making it go with the million three that they get. Well, they're, they're struggling, you know, in things like you spoke about, but they've made some tremendous strides down here. They've built this tremendous athletic facility here, the baseball, football, soccer complex, and track field that they've put up here in this one confine, and it's a beautiful facility. It's just, you know, it's a shame to worry about in athletics, the financial end of it, and, you know, the concentration should be on athletes that are involved in your program. But as you say, it, it's an integral part, and you have to be concerned about it. But I, I like what I see on the field this evening. You have some hard-nosed football players that came out here determined to prove that they're a good team. Again, this series is 10 games old. This is game number 11, and you can see why it's such a great contest. Both teams have won five. The Titans don't give in up anything to the Wolfpack. Well, this is a rubber match that we spoke about earlier that the program might not be here next year, and if that's the case, they would like to be up on the up end of that one loss situation. Quincy Guy has him at the line of scrimmage, second and four. At the Wolfpack 47-yard line, Danzy is in motion left. Guy rolls that way, now steps up. Throws downfield, out of bounds, overthrown. It was intended for Poli Banks. Guy has completed just one pass in four attempts before that one. Well, Guy at that time was a little undetermined when he rolled out to his left. You could see that he, he's not a known passer. He wanted to pull that down and run with it, but at the last moment, he thought he could throw that across his body. But great pursuit by Lamont Porter made him throw that before he wanted to get that off. And if, if you take a second look at it, you'll see Guy come out. He comes back in between the rush, but Lamont Porter doing a great job with his reads flowing across the field with him. Forced Guy to throw that one well out of bounds. It's about as far as he can throw it. Banks is split wide left on a third and four. In fact, jumping around defensively, that may have thrown the count off because Guy didn't look like he where he knew where he was going after the snap. He wanted to pitch it. Now Nevada wants to take a timeout. They want to preserve the 61 seconds left on the clock, and the Titans obviously will be punting here. So Nevada would like to get some offense going. I mentioned earlier about seeing Fred Gatlin in the lineup for Chris Vargas. Not that Vargas is doing anything wrong, but sometimes you like to change momentum, you like to change the synergism of what's happening out there. You put a guy like Gatlin in, maybe that changes it. Well, and, and when you look at it right now, the Nevada offense looks a little flat, and to, the injection of another quarterback might just perk everyone up to another level, say, hey, you know, guys, we just got to get the job done. We haven't been getting it done, and they recognize that. But it, it is something, that, a system that has worked in the past for Nevada, when Gatlin would be quarterback, and then you would get Vargas put into the lineup maybe that infusion is needed tonight and Vargas's numbers aren't bad he is 14 of 23 has that one interception that Darius Watson pulled down on a, a good effort at the one yard line but he's completed more than half his passes as I said 14 of 23 but has not been able to su sustain any drives and that's the most critical point the, the statistical game you might win it but you need to win the game on the scoreboard this evening yeah the balls have been caught but they've been fumbled after the catches and that certainly is not Vargas's fault well, the guy who's been a big uh, offensive factor in the ball game is Prefontaine, the punter, who is in for the Titans, will punt once again. Reeves in single safety. Nevada with a 10-man front. Prefontaine hurries and gets it off, and he spins and falls down. Reeves will take the fair catch at the 10-yard line, but Nevada, again, had heavy pressure in Noel Prefontaine. Prefontaine did an excellent job of getting that ball off, and he, he's been that savior all night long. If you recall earlier, he avoided uh, Xavier Carey when he came through freely, but Nevada with a 10-man rush, Prefontaine getting that off very quickly that time. He even tried to draw a penalty, faking like he was hit, 
But Nevada's going to start in very poor field position at the 10-yard line. They have 90 yards of field in front of them to cover. Kind of protecting himself after he kicked it. He jumped up cocoon style and kind of rolled into a ball. Well, he's not looking too forward to contact. So Vargas will operate with 55 seconds remaining in the second quarter at his own 10-yard line. Off balance throws. Oh, boy, was intercepted. No, good attempt. A diving attempt as Vargas just really threw that one away. He had Reeves going down deep, but nobody in the general area. Vargas had tremendous pressure at the middle of the line. Jason Wells in at nose guard came right over the center. Ryan O'Donnell and drove him right back at Chris Vargas' feet. And he felt the pressure, and he let that one go before he wanted to. And he was very fortunate that was not picked off out in the left flat. Kerry Johns is the guy who tried to come up with the, the low interception just off the surface, but he couldn't get there before the ball bounced. Second and 10 Nevada at their own 10-yard line. Holmes remains in the eye-back position. Vargas to throw. He's in trouble. He threw that one away to the right side. Nobody there at all. No flags down. Well, he was hit. He was contacted just as he threw the ball. The referee saw that Vargas was not trying to ground that one, but he was just trying to throw the ball. But if you notice the pressure from the, the defensive line coming from his backside, just driving right into Vargas that time and hit him in the back just as he was throwing the ball and made the ball go awry. Chris Vargas, when he's hit his receivers, has been very sharp this evening. But when he has not, he has looked very poor. Titans have put a lot of pressure on him. That time was Mike Allen, who just uh, got rid of the block of Diedrich Holmes and came right into the back of Vargas. 45 seconds remaining. It's still 10 yards to go. This time it's third and 10. Vargas, middle screen to Reeves. Got some running room, trying to get wide left. He's at the 20, 25, and he'll be very close to the 30-yard line. See where they mark it. That's the second time tonight they've thrown the middle screen to Reeves. That time, he had some running room to the outside. Run out at the end of that play by Joseph Vaughn, but excellent play call by Chris Vargas that time. And when he gets the ball to his receivers, he's been right on the money with him. That time, he drops back with the middle screen coming to the, to the right side of the formation with Reeves dragging across. And Reeves does an excellent job of reading his blocking, running out towards the left sideline be, before being run out by Vaughn. But big play for the pack. Vargas again to throw. Wants to go up top. He's got two receivers in the area. Overthrown. Reeves didn't know where the ball was. He was looking over his left shoulder. The ball was thrown deep over his right shoulder. But Wolfpack with two receivers, as I said, in the general area. Singleton and Reeves were both out there. And uh, I guess Chris Vargas hoping that one of them could run under it. Well, he's putting it up in the air, hoping that the players can run under it, giving them ample time. But the problem with that is that you've got the ball coming out of the lights. That's an adjustment that the pack players have to make, make in this type of a game. They're accustomed to playing day games. Remember that thing happened last year up at Montana when Brian Reeves ran under a ball that was intended for another receiver and ran for a touchdown. Cornell West is in the lineup. He catches the ball at the 37-yard line, dives to maybe the 39. Wolfpack will take a timeout with 22 seconds. We'll keep it right here. Reminder, at halftime, we will take a timeout, then we'll send you back to, uh, to Kurt in Reno. But we will keep it right here for now. Well, the pack right now is trying to do some, something exciting. They bring Cornell West Ladies into the game and uh, getting him to come out of the backfield, and they feel that he's the quickest back on receptions. Nevada in the middle of a three-game road trip. They uh, played last week, as you know, at Tulane. Tonight here, obviously, at Fullerton. They've got a week off next week to regroup. Then they go against the Rebels. The Rebels won today, by the way. They are one on the road in Stockton. They beat ULP 21-17, to so we'll be at Sam Boyd Silver Bowl for our next telecast, and that'll be against UNLV's running Rebels. And there's nothing like playing in an interstate rivalry. Nevada and UNLV, it's going to be a game that everyone in Nevada will want to be involved in. Let's go to the sideline and John Killerin. John? You know, if you remember back to Tulane last week, the pack scored on four plays, just over a minute. It counted about 74 yards. And the big thing is there's a big Wolfpack section of fans all up here, this entire section. Hundreds of pack fans waiting to do some cheering for a Nevada score, so there's no time like now as far as these fans are concerned. John, right down in front of us, and they look like they're kind of sitting on their hands waiting for something to happen, but, well, they should. Almost 30 minutes of football concluded. Neither team has pushed it across the goal line. You know, the surprising part about this Fullerton defense is that they haven't gone into a prevent coverage. They're still very close to the line of scrimmage. They're challenging his receivers coming off the ball, just not letting them run freely. At their own 39-yard line, third and two, but more importantly, 20 seconds remain. Vargas throws up the seam for Senior. He's got it, the 30, the 25, the 20. He'll go down inside the 15-yard line. Mike Senior running a post pattern, and Chris Vargas caught him in full stride. 
Great pass by Chris Vargas. Reading the coverage, there was vacancy in the middle of the zone. Throws a post route to Mike Sr., who had gotten between the coverage and got behind the secondary, brought down inside the 15-yard line. Vargas will down it and save the time on the clock. 11 seconds remain. Nevada with their best scoring opportunity of the night. They will mark it at the 13-yard line. And now, the Chris's, Alt and Vargas, will talk it over. Well, Chris Vargas, when he's found his receivers, as we mentioned earlier, he's been right on the money. It's just the passes that he's had come in, fall incomplete tonight. He has not looked very good on them. But that time, he was right on the money to Mike Sr., ran a perfect post route, good protection from his offensive line, and the ball was on the money, the biggest play of the night for the pass. Tom Matter, the tight end, is split away from the line of scrimmage on the left side. He's joined by two other receivers. West is alone on the right side. Vargas drops. Heavy pressure. Throws as he's hit. It's incomplete. Boy, they were on him once again. They are coming and coming frequently. John Hayes coming from the right outside linebacker position came in freely. Chris Vargas did not have a chance to get the ball to Reeves. Reeves had not come out of his, his flat on his route. Terrellack will come in to try a field goal, but Haynes again, second time tonight, he's been unblocked coming into the backfield. And Chris Vargas has been punished consistently by this defensive front of the Titans. Steve Terrellack, who has converted six of nine field goals this year, will try a 30-yarder. Ryan O'Donnell is the long snapper. Vargas is the holder. The right foot of Terrellack. Puts it up. It is long enough end over end. It is good. And finally, with three seconds remaining before halftime, we have score on the board. Nevada gets the first score of the night. They lead 3-0. Well, a very fortunate break for the pack there to get some points before time ran out for the half. That is that motivational lift that could get, get them over the hump coming out for the second half. But Turlak able to deliver his seventh field goal of the season. Chris Vargas with the big play to Mike Senior to get them in scoring position. And the pack is on the board here in the first half. John Killer and had talked earlier. We went down to him as Wolfpack fans were looking for something to yell about. Uh, pretty prophetic for John to, to forecast that because just a play later, Nevada comes up with a big pass to Senior and then followed by the field goal. Well, the big break, you take them whenever you can get them, and the Pack got one late here in the first half, and, you know, like we say, it could be that momentum builder, but they're going to have to go in and regroup here at halftime because they've been very sluggish in their play in the first half offensively. Nine-play drive for the Wolfpack. They go 78 yards, and the Terrellac 30-yard field goal puts them on top. Let's see if they scrub it now or kick it deep. Arthur Davis is a deep man standing at about his two-yard line. Squib kick taken up front. And they'll go out of bounds. It was Jerry McDaniel who took it. And that's the way the first half will end. University of Nevada will go into the locker room leading 3-0. We will be back. Kurt will be joining us in the studio. We return for our halftime show. Yeah, I know, but it's 25 minutes on the clock. Aren't we coming back with three minutes on the clock? Three minutes on the clock, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 22 minutes, I guess. Whatever. Yeah, what, what I'm concerned, though, that we, we uh, coordinate it with radio that we'll be back with three minutes on the clock. And your very best is good. Thank you. I don't think we're going to come back until like five minutes before. So I want you to take like ten minutes.
We go back to that, only 28 on the ground. Let me go down to John Killer and John? You know, Fullerton just got done shooting off their homecoming fireworks. The pack, of course, looking for some offensive fireworks in the second half. They'll have to hold on to the ball. Those turnovers cost the pack dearly on drives that could have led to points on the scoreboard. Dan and James, back up to you. Again, I think John has an excellent point. It were, it were turnovers in the first half, three fumbles and an interception. The Wolfpack giving it up four times. They could not sustain much other than that 78-yard drive for, the, for their field goal. Well, that's been a problem the past couple of weeks. The consistency has just not been there. They need to find it and find it in a hurry if they expect to keep this one on top. James, they'll have the ball as we come back for the third quarter. We'll take this timeout. We'll come back with a kickoff and start the third quarter. last week drunk in the streets. <laughs> mm. What's a number? Who's a kicker? West, thank you. For the Wolfpack. Nevada won the coin toss as is their custom. They have deferred to take the ball to start the third quarter. O'Connor will kick off and Cornell West is deep inside his five yard line. Julio O'Connor comes forward, right footer, end over end. West will return it on the run from the seven yard line. 10, 15, got some room, comes to the middle of the field. He'll get out near the 25 yard line. And Nevada will have it first and 10 from there. By the way, glad you could join us tonight for our simulcast here on KRNV News for Reno and KROW and the Wolfpack Radio Network. Chris Vargas will start the second half. Respectable numbers, James. We mentioned the 220 yards passing, completing 17 of 32. That's about where he's been, one or two passes over 50% all night. Well, there's productivity in that last drive of the half to get that field goal. I think that Chris all wants to build upon that and thinks he can keep it going here in the second half. They start out with Diedrich Holmes turning the right corner, got a block. He gets outside to 30, 35, running along the sideline. He'll get good yardage up near the 43-yard line. Diedrich Holmes with 34 yards in the first half gets a big gainer to start the second. Well, Diedrich Holmes did a tremendous job of reading his blockers that were set up in front of him that time. Chris Vargas coming out, catching Fullerton off guard, feeling that they would run. But the new guard that was injected into the lineup that we spoke so much about, Valentin, did a tremendous job getting outside, getting down the corner, and Diedrich's home was able to get to the corner, pick up a strong 14 yards on that run. Holmes now with 50 yards on the evening. And Nevada with a first down. Vargas to throw. Has pressure from the backside. Throws for Reeves. It'll be intercepted by Vaughn. Back at the 24-yard line at the 30. 35, tight roping the sideline, over the 40 to the 45. Vargas hoping that Brian Reeves could run under it, threw it high, and Vaughn, who had Reeves in front of him, played him deep and just took it over his shoulder for the second interception of the evening. And that's been one of the problems. When you throw the ball high and allow the defense to react to it, that gives them time to close on it. But Chris Vargas had tremendous pressure from the inside from the defensive line. And that time he just hung it up down the sideline on a fly route to, to Reeves, and Vaughn just ran under it almost like 
he was the receiver that time. As we saw in the replay, you could Vargas could really feel the heat from his backside. He was hit just as he released. It. Williams is back in on the ground to go to Smith. And he will get near the 47-yard line. Jamal Smith, who started in the first quarter, but we haven't seen him since early in the first quarter. He'll go to the sideline after that carry. Well, Smith has got a lot of work early in the first quarter, and he was not expected to be one of the starters, but he did a fine job of carrying the ball in the first quarter, and he opens up here in the second half with a four-yard run just right up the middle of the pack defense. We weren't sure whether Trendell Williams was injured right at the end of the half, but he's back in. Quincy Guy replaced him right at the end of the second quarter, but Williams is back in. Double wing situation. Inside handoff to Ryan. Ryan will get, oh, excuse me, a fumble, and it's picked up by Martin Washington. Ryan had his hands on it, and suddenly he didn't. Washington did. A tremendous hit right in the middle of the line by Lamont Porter, the middle linebacker, just met Ryan right in the hole and jarred the ball loose. And Washington, Johnny on the spot, was alert enough to pick it up and return the ball for the pack. Let's get a good look at it. Coming, trying to run the veer, Andre Howard was actually the hitter that had met Ryan right in the hole, and Washington was able to pick it up and recover for the pack. A big break early in the second half. I saw Ryan get it, and the next thing I knew, he didn't have it. So Nevada with great field position at the Titan 44. They throw to Reeves, who had alligator arms. He pulled his hands down. He knew it. Reeves was maybe looking at Vaughn, the defensive man, because the ball was there. It was certainly catchable. Looking to run before he caught the ball, Chris Vargas with the three-step drop, throwing a quick look-in route to Reeves. But this, this secondary for Fullerton was somewhat suspect coming into the game, but they have not shown any worse for wear this evening. They've been right on top of these packed receivers. They've punished them. They've made the big plays, two interceptions. They've caused fumbles. They've done a tremendous job this evening. Chris Singleton will go wide left. Reeves is a slot man that way, and Stevens on the right side of the field all alone. Vargas looking for Stevens, going along the sideline. He comes back for the ball, and we will have a flag. Stevens did catch the ball. We have a flag down, or did he trap it? No, the ball came loose right at the end. He was fighting, and, and they were fighting with each other. It's going to be interesting to see which way this call goes because Stevens was fighting Vaughn, trying to get back inside of him. Vaughn had the inside position, so... And they got a holding penalty against the pack, so we could also end up with declining situations right here. But Stevens going down the sideline, and both players are fighting each other, and Stevens was actually out of bounds and coming back inside. So we'll probably get the offsetting with the holding penalty in the backfield. I got to say, great camera work. You saw the whole thing. Stevens trying to come back against Vaughn, and the ball going through. Remember, Vaughn is the same guy who grabbed Brian Reeves twice by the jersey. Reeves complained he couldn't get a flight. Well, Stevens is a little bigger receiver than Reeves, so when you do make contact with him, it shows up a little more. So wipe out the offsetting penalties, and we'll do the second down once again. Second and 10 at the Titan 44-yard line. Vargas, again, quick look into Senior. Caught it on his left hip and is dragged down at the 37-yard line. The ball actually thrown behind Mike Senior, but he reached around and grabbed it and hung on. But Mike Senior in the right slot that time. Chris Vargas read the defense perfectly. The, the secondary had backed off, allowed Senior to come underneath the coverage. The linebackers were out of there. And he just read it perfectly, and he'll throw that quick hitch to Senior. He, senior very alert, able to hold it on his left hip before he's brought down by Godfrey, who's had a very busy night. I was just about to mention that they've got Godfrey off the line of scrimmage at a strong safety. He is backed up. They had him in the first half playing right at the line. Vargas on third down, throws for Reeves on a curl at the 30-yard line. Guess who? Godfrey there to get him. Godfrey is there, but the pack line is sold up somewhat in the middle and slowed down the penetration of the Fulton defensive line because that time Reeves had a drive-off pattern. That time he drove Godfrey off, able to curl back. Vargas got the ball to him in time before Godfrey could close and bring him down right at the spot. Key issue, you're talking about the offensive line giving Vargas some time. O'Donnell, along with Valentin and Lorenzi at the guard. O'Donnell in the middle, then Shara and Portanich. No running room that time right side for Holmes. He gets it just about back to the line of scrimmage, which was the 30-yard line. Gonna lose about a half yard on that play. You spoke about Lorenzi and Port Nice that time trying to run a counter. They pulled both offside offensive linemen, bringing them around, but excellent penetration by the Fullerton defensive front. They've been very stingy from the 30 on end tonight against this pack offense. James, you're right. They'll lose a yard. Back it up outside the 30. They go to Holmes, left side, got a block, turns a corner, 25 runs hard, and will get to about the 17-yard line. 
Holmes has ran very hard tonight. That time with a sweep around the left side, Holmes was able to get around the corner. Good seal block from his offensive line and tight end Tom Williams. Tom Williams was in and got an excellent block on the outside linebacker, and Holmes was able to pick up eight yards on the play. Dedrick Holmes, we mentioned, and I, I'm not sure what they mentioned on our simulcast version of our halftime show, but Dedrick Holmes was cut, and that, that shot you could see right through his face mask where he has a bandage on the top of his nose. He was cut at the end of the first half. Vargas drops, looks right side, throws for Singleton, who was tripped, but the ball was uncatchable. Darius Watson had coverage on him, but the ball was uncatchable. And uh, the third down play, third and short, brings up a fourth down now, James. And that Steve Terrellack will come in. Once again, he has a 30-yard field goal. That's what separates these two teams right now. Well, Fullerton has been very stingy with the pack once they've gotten to the 30-yard line. They've been able to stir up their defense. They've allowed the pack to move freely from 30 to 30. Now it's back on Terlak's shoulders again to attempt a 39-yard field goal. But it's very important for Fullerton that they, was a, they were able to stop the pack early here in the second half on a drive. It will be a 39-yard attempt from the left half. Vargas puts it down. Terlak puts it up. He's got the distance. And it is no good. He had it long enough, but off to the left. So the score remains the same. We're in the third quarter. 11 minutes and 47 seconds remain in this period. Nevada leads 3-0. We'll be back in just one minute. So thank yes. you to Barnes for sponsoring tonight's game and all the discount tickets for all 30 Orange County Bonds. Thank you. tonight the one of two in the field goal department and uh, as we said earlier James that's what's separating the two teams the 30 yard field goal Titans have it back on offense well both teams have missed field goals this evening <laughs> Williams with a wishbone behind him gives to Davis he's grabbed right at the line of scrimmage and wrestled down Arthur Davis finding some tough traffic through the right side Wolfpack defensive front has been very steady. Joe Caspers and uh, Jim Jones that time in on that stop, but Davis uh, with little or no well, gain of about two on the play, but they've been very stingy on giving up the running yardage ever since that first quarter. Second and eight. Fullerton with the ball. They trail 3-0. Williams with a lone back up behind him. Motion man on the motion. He pitches to Danzi, and Brock Marin is there to drag him down way back at the 18 yard line. That worked the first time to Steve Danzi. Twice they have tried it since, and Brock Marion has been the guy that's thwarted that twice in a row. Great positioning by Brock Marion. Came up to a perfect breakdown posture as you teach a defensive player. But Williams coming out, pitching the ball to Danzi, coming from a wing back position on the right side. But Brock Marion came down, perfect form. Brought him down, did not try to punish the ball carry, but just wanted to wrap him up, bring him down for the loss on the play. Third now, third and 14 back at their 19-yard line. By the way, Steve Bryant was back in the defensive unit that time, so that ankle turn not keeping him out. Pitched the ball to Davis, running right side. Little seam, some running room. He'll bang his way to the 25, the 30, got out of the tackle, the 40-yard line. And finally, Martin Washington has to grab him from behind. Great gain, Arthur Davis. Arthur Davis, a good piece of heads he running that time. Coming with a pitch, a sweep out right. Got his blocking in front of him. Davis had a gaping hole once he got to the line of scrimmage. They cleared out, got up on the Wolfpack linebackers. Andre Howard was picked up by the fullback, but Davis ran through some arm tackles that time. Picked up some blocking downfield. A good run out to midfield at the 49-yard line. The Titans in excellent field position. Looked like Davis was dead at the 25. He was short of the first down, but he had more in him. So at their own 49, first and 10. Again, they come out of the bone. 
Williams to throw, up the right sidelines, got a man, Banks, but the ball knocked away. Poli Banks was there, but Xavier Carey came on, had a hand on it. X has two interceptions this year. He thought he should have had a third. Well, he had that ball, in, except when he made the collision with Banks on the sideline. But he read Williams. The quarterback rolled out to his right, locked on Banks, his primary receiver, did not look him off, allowed Xavier Carey from his free safety position to roll over. And Xavier leaped up, had the ball in his hand, but the collision with Banks jarred him of the ball in his second and long. On the replay, I see why X thought he should have had it. He did have control of it. He had both hands on it. Second and 10 at their own 49. On the ground, Danzy running a slant. Left side broke a tackle, broke another one. Inside the 40, finally dragged down at the 36-yard line. And it was Forey Duckett who made the stop on Steve Danzy. That is not a good sign when your secondary personnel are making the tackle. But the Fullerton offensive line is coming off the ball very well at this point in the contest. They're getting off into the Wolfpack defensive line. They're standing up high. And you cannot afford to stand up high when your defensive line, the offensive lineman, will just drive you off the ball. Danzy reading is blocking. And they're just reaching out, arm tackling. But great leg drive by Danzy to get in and pick up 12 to 13 yards. James down in front of us. Fred Gatlin loosening his arm. Don't know if he's coming in the ball game, but he's getting loose. First and 10 Titans. They fake the dive. Williams rolls out left on the run. Throws to Gamble. Eric Gamble will be dragged down after a very short game. Gamble, 5'11", 240-pound junior. He's about as wide as he is tall. Well, he looks like one of the offensive linemen, and technically he is playing back there at fullback. But Williams just trying to put a new wrinkle in his offense, change up things. But at that time, Andre Howard was chasing him again as he threw the ball. And Andre Howard, just as Williams let the ball go, delivered another blow to him as he did on a couple occasions in the first half. Williams, like Vargas, has taken some lumps tonight. He stays in there. Trindell this time gives it to Davis. Wrapped up by Washington. Washington came across from his outside linebacker position, but there was no hole as it was blocked in the middle, and Washington around the shoulders grabbed him and just uh, wrestled him down. Martin Washington with a good pinch down posture from his outside linebacker position. He pinched right down, stayed right in the floor of things, and as the back got to the line of scrimmage, he was there, Davis, to make the tackle, and Washington a good play for the pack defense. You know what surprised me coming into this game? Washington had only a total of 12 tackles. He's played well tonight, bringing up now a third and long for the Titans. They have seven yards to go for a first down to keep their drive alive. Fake the dive. Williams rolls out right. He's grabbed, and he'll be sacked way back at the 40-yard line. Steve Bryan was in and there on him. Tremendous pursuit from the backside from Nevada's defense. Steve Bryan, who had the ankle injury in the first half, that time tracked Williams down from his right outside linebacker position. He did not take the pump fake. He kept with his pursuit, and as Williams recocked the ball, Bryan was right there to clean him up. You know, you go back to Martin Washington. He didn't have many sacks coming into this game, but he does a tremendous job of turning in the pursuit so his inside linebackers can flow and get to the play. Uh, Andre Howard and Porter, they've done a tremendous job with the support of Washington. Prefontaine will punt for the seventh time tonight, and the Wolfpack for the first time tonight will have twin safeties. Left footer has plenty of time. Cut off the side of his foot. The spiral will bounce at the four. It'll get in the end zone. So we have the same score we had at halftime. 3-0 University of Nevada leading Cal State Fullerton. 8.07 to go in the third quarter. We return. I think we'll see Fred Gatlin. Thank you. This guy gets in his own world. He's over here. Ladies and gentlemen, meet at Spurs Grill and Bar for tonight's post game. Oh, reception. I'm sorry. Excuse me. All appetizers at Excuse me. What was the favorite Spurs line at the secretary that he said to the secretary? Yeah, QB, right. The gap. Yes, but Spurs what was the line he said to him? Cal State yeah. Fullerton Are there any spiders? Thank you. <laughs> Gatlin, 11 of 17. <laughs> We are back here in Fullerton, California, Titan Stadium, and Fred Gatlin has made his first appearance of the night. 
The gap coming in 11 completions and 17 attempts with two interceptions so far in the year. So Fred Gatlin from this area. He's a local kid and he gets a chance to play in front of some people that he grew up playing in front of. And the pack needs a spark on offense and then hopefully that Freddie could bring it to him. Holmes remains alone back. Gatlin drops straight back. He throws on a post for Reeves. Great catch. What a catch by Reeves at the 45 yard line. He suspended in the air as Gatlin got on the ball on a line and Reeves was as well covered as you can be, but he came down with it. Great coverage that time by the secondary of Fullerton. Reeves running a post route from his left side. Freddie Gatlin feeling very confident walking into the game with a five step drop locked in on Brian Reeves. But the difference is great hit by the defense of Fullerton. He was able to get that ball on the line, not allowing the secondary and Vaughn was all over Reeves. He couldn't make an adjustment. He just had to trail Reeves and Reeves made a good reception up at the 46 yard line. Fred Gatlin welcome to Titan turf as he was hit boy. Three guys converged on him when he let it go. Gatlin again to throw on first down. Along the sideline, going deep for King. Daryl King with a great catch, and he's out of bounds. He came up with the ball, but he was out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Darius Watson was saying, yeah, I'm glad he was out of bounds because he had man-for-man -man coverage. But Gatlin put it the only place that King could catch it. Freddie Gatlin is coming to the game fine. He threw a nice spiral out to Daryl King, running a, post, a fly route down the right side. Great concentration by King. Forced out by contact. Foot came down on the line. Questionable call, but... The pack has another chance to rock, crank it up here on second down. Well, Darius Watson, the guy that had the coverage, didn't think it was questioned. Well, he saw King's foot come down, but Gatlin, two passes. He's been on the mark. He's completed one of two now. Second and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Nevada with the ball and the lead, 3-0. Reeves has the bullet on the sideline pass out of bounds at the 49. Watson again on the coverage. He pushed him out. What this also does with Freddie Gatlin in the game, it slows down the rush of the Titans. If you can see that they're rotating a lot of defensive linemen in because Freddie Gatlin moves the ball around very quickly. So you're going to have to get in your pursuit line. So they keep trying to keep their off defensive linemen fresh. Freddie Gatlin is just firing the ball to his receivers in a hurry. Reeves came in with 27 catches. He now has 38 and a total of 102 yards on those nine catches tonight. Gatlin now on a third and uh, just about six. Pressure up the middle. He got rid of it, but the flag is down. Boy, he had heavy pressure up the middle, James. They were on him before he could really pick out his receiver, and his arm was coming forward, so it should be an incomplete pass. They did. They, they, uh, Berringer, defensive lineman, backup defensive lineman, was all over Freddie Gatlin, but they're going to get Ryan O'Donnell for holding on that play. Ryan O'Donnell has had his hands full all night long. El Lorenzo that time the nose guard came in fresh after a couple of plays of rest and he just came right up the middle and Ryan O'Donnell had to lock on to him and hold on for dear life. He was taking him for a ride that time and they called him for a penalty. The Bruninger, the guy again, he was untouched when he was in Gatlin's face, came right from the right side and Gatlin trying to get rid of it, got it down and the Wolfpack will run out of downs as they will punt on a fourth and six. Polly Banks will be back at about his 10 yard line and Lester will be on once again. Tommy Matter, the long snapper tonight, has not seen a ball all evening, and he came into the game as the second leading receiver on the pack team. Matter in the offensive set when he's not on special teams is the tight end. Fullerton with a 10-man front. Now they back off. Lester hangs it high. Banks comes forward and takes the fair catch at his 22-yard line. Still in the third quarter, 7-19 remain, and still the same score. Nevada leading Fullerton 3-0. We'll be back in just one minute. Falls, what is it? Well, he was forced out of bounds. And a face mask. Okay, good. Let's be going to show it to us again. Okay. Okay. Seven nineteen to go in the third quarter, James. Let's come back to a play that uh, could have turned things around for the Wolfpack in 
uh, maybe still a little suspect as Gatlin hung it out to Daryl King. King and Watson were there. He made the catch, as you see. Then look at that right foot. Mm. He was forced out of bounds, but look at the left hand coming off King's face mask. Well, it didn't change things around. Quincy Guy, new quarterback for the Titans. Played a little bit at the end of the second quarter. He's back in for Williams. Wolfpack jumping around. Casper fumble at the line of scrimmage. Who's got it? Guy coming forward and falling on it. Guy trying to pull, pull out a little prematurely there from the center and just didn't bring the snap with him, and it fell on the back ground. Fortunately enough, he was able to fall on it before Joe Casper's got on top of him. Casper looked like he was on roller skates. He was going back and forth at the line of scrimmage. Well, Casper looks like he's on ice skates, big 73. Yeah, but he was able to get there on the ball, and Guy was fortunate enough to recover it for Fullerton. Loss of a, no yards on the play that time, but he's a little nervous coming in here in the third quarter. Double wing set up again. Davis in motion. He gets the pitch. We have a flag down. Davis trying to turn the corner, but Howard runs him out. James, this is a homecoming game for the Titans from Cal State Fullerton. 4,680 in attendance tonight. Andre Howard has been ever present tonight from his linebacker position. But Steve Bryan made great penetration at time across the line on Guy, the quarterback. Andre Howard right on top of the running back Davis as he got to the sideline to slam him out for a loss on the play. And Nevada will decline the penalty, the motion penalty, it'll bring up third and about 11 to go for a first down. You know, I've been very impressed with the linebacker play in Nevada tonight because last week they had their hands full down at Tulane, giving up over 260 yards on the ground, but they've been right on top of this Fullerton attack. You know that Fullerton is not going to throw the ball, and they've been right there, Johnny, on the spot. So they're sitting back five yards off the ball where they could get their flow angles and done a tremendous job of cleaning up on the tackles. Joe uh, Caspers, Tanksley, and Dunn are the three down linemen. As Guy sprints out left, and he's grabbed from the backside and dropped, and it's Steve Bryant once again. Another one of those linebackers doing a tremendous job for the pack defense. Steve Bryant, when he came to University of Nevada, was a quarterback. He searched around in a couple of positions. Tight end was one. Found a home at linebacker, doing a tremendous job of making plays. And that time, he stayed right where he was supposed to be, right in his lane. He did not over-pursue. Joe Dunn coming from the inside, and Steve Bryant, along with Tom Tanksley. Big stop for the pack defense. So Prefontaine standing back at his five-yard line will punt to Brian Reeves. Pre gets it off. Good spiraling kick, driving Reeves back to his 35-yard line. At the 40, looking for a picket line. He'll get over the 40 to the 42-yard line. McCray made the stop. 555 still to go in the third quarter in Nevada clinging to a very slim 3-0 lead. They have the, but you can see a new spark of enthusiasm. Freddie Gatlin came into the game, completed a couple passes. He was able to rifle around to a couple of receivers, but the enthusiasm picked up defensively somewhat. Freddie's getting his second chance to move the offense, and we'll see what can he get done on this drive. Other thing too, Chris Alt's got the headset on now. He roamed the sideline without the headset in the first half. Here in the third quarter, he's put him on. Getting involved in the game. Gatlin again drops to throw. Middle screen, complete the reads. He's got some running room, looking for a block. Jitterbugging back, he comes back right side at midfield. And then met and dropped at about the 44-yard line. Kerry Jones that time chasing Reeves across the field, but Freddie Gatlin coming back with the middle screen is a big play in the Wolfpack arsenal. Chris Vargas did an excellent job with it in the first half. Freddie Gatlin here with Brian Reeves getting his offensive lineman downfield. The key to this play is that Brian Reeves comes behind the line of scrimmage, allows his offensive lineman to get a couple yards downfield in front of him. He's able to pick up those blocks, get across midfield down to the 44-yard line. The matter with a first and 10. Holmes nowhere to run at all. Haynes was on him before he could move. Haynes coming from his strong side, linebacker position with a blitz right up the middle and uh, met Holmes in the backfield. Big play for the Titan defense. Seemed like the pack was getting something going offensively. Tell you what, I'm glad they're not throwing me the ball with the hands I've got up here. I've had two cokes in my hand and they've both gone over. That's all right. You know, you get a little nimble fingers once you get over half century. Second and 14 after Holmes thrown for the four-yard loss. Gatlin again to throw. Stevens has the ball at the 40, broke a tackle, broke a second, and finally dropped at the 37-yard line. Jones again on the tackle on Stevens, but Chris 
Stevens that time running a little look in route. Uh, Gatlin with tremendous arm strength getting the ball to him. Just a little five step drive off the ball and Gatlin getting it right on the money to him. And Stevens trying to make a couple of guys miss getting it down inside the 40 yard line. Mullins missed him and Johns is the guy that had to bring bring him down. Third and about four. Gatlin again to throw. Rifles one complete the reads at the 30. He'll get to the 25 yard line with a gang tackling. He'll have more than enough for the first down. But they're starting to pick that defense apart. Godfrey was the first to get to him. He had help from Witten along with Haynes. A change in tempo with the two quarterbacks. If, if you notice, Gatlin, he is firing the ball. It's getting there with the receivers in stride. That was a little behind Reeves on that play. But it's getting to the receivers in time where they can make a reaction and turn up and look at the defenders coming towards them. Nevada on the march. Gatlin sprints out left. Looking. He'll take it and be dropped at the 20-yard line. He was looking for Reeves about the goal line, but Reeves was pretty well covered. Gatlin made a mistake that time. When he ran, he should have picked up his blocker. Ryan O'Donnell from his center position had pulled out on the bootleg with Gatlin. Gatlin had rolled out to his left, faked the homes inside. Ryan O'Donnell did a great job of hustling, getting outside. If Gatlin had a cut back inside, he had Ryan O'Donnell there ready to make a block for him downfield. Watson made a good stop. He just waited for Gat to get to him. Gain of four, second and six, the ball right at the 20-yard line of the Tigers. In the third quarter, Nevada leads 3-0. Gatlin looking right side, looking for Singleton, overthrown. Singleton and Watson were high in the air. But Gatlin throwing a little too high and maybe a little too softly. Mix up on the route looked like that time. Singleton was coming in on a post route. Gatlin drops back. He's reading. Singleton's going post. Gatlin's reading fade route because he lobs it to the outside, and Singleton has come inside, and the ball just floats over his head. Third down, third and six. But this is where the Pack has had problems all night long. Once they get inside the 30, they have struggled. Very dangerous receiver, Michael Stevens, goes wide left. Gatlin drops, looks right side, throws complete to Reeves. He'll have enough for the first down at the 11-yard line. So Reeves now with 12 catches tonight, James. He's been very busy, it, it, and those have been not really a silent 12, but a productive 12 because it didn't seem like he's accumulated that, that many passes, but coming over the middle, he's one of those receivers that doesn't have any fear, and Brian Reeves is running that slant route, coming off, driving off five, six yards real hard, breaking it inside really, really quick, and the ball's right on the money. Diedrich Holmes trying to turn the corner right, does turn the corner at the 10, and struggles out of bounds at the eight yard line. Holmes over the full head of speed when he got around the corner just to, didn't have enough room to really turn it up. But one thing that Diedrich Holmes did right at the end of that run that was so 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 unthought about is when he got there, he tried to slow down just enough to drag it out another extra yard or half a yard at the end of that run, just trying to stay in bounds. But the Packers have their best drive going right now so far in the game. Holmes getting his first start, and he's a little bit banged up, as you see on our simulcast. Look at Holmes in the huddle. He, put his head down but his nose is heavily bandaged where he was cut right at the end of the second quarter with this opportunity that Diedrich has got to play in this game to carry the load from the backfield regardless of the injury that he has you don't expect that young man to come out this evening second and six the ball at the eight yard line of the Titans deepest the Wolfpack has been all night long Gatlin drops the throw scrambles away from pressure as he rolls right throws in the end zone the corner of the end zone senior he got it was he in no they say senior wide his feet out of bounds. You only need one in in college football. Boy, we'll get another look at this one. I wonder if it'll be as controversial as a Daryl King. Well, just, just a great play reaction at time by Freddie Gatlin. Tremendous pressure coming at Freddie Gatlin. He drops back in the pocket. He feels the pressure from his left. He rolls out to his right, and there's th three players right in his face. But Mike Senior opening the back of the end zone just was not able to get one of those feet in right at the end. As you see right there, that, that footer came off the ground. And that second, that left foot came down out of bounds. Unfortunate break for the pack. Second time tonight, they've had a receiver who put that foot down right on the line. The official right on it made the proper call. Third and six from the eight yard line. Gatlin again, straight back. Throws over the middle. Touchdown! It was Tommy Matter who caught his first touchdown of the year. 
Tommy Maddox spoke about him earlier when he came in to do a snap for a punt that he had not caught a ball all evening. And he came into the game, the Pack's second leading receiver. He had lined up at the tight end on the left side of the formation. Gatlin drops back. Tommy Maddox does an initial block at the line of scrimmage. Then he cuts across the middle. Freddie Gatlin with the ball right on the money. Catches Maddox in stride. Touchdown for the Pack, their first major score of the evening. Matter not intended to be much of the offense tonight. We get another look at it. They were not going to throw to the tight end, but they got down in the scoring zone. And Matter with a good slant, as you said, James, and he was there. But needing that big play, that injection into the team, coming out, they had played flat most of the first half, came out early in the second half playing flat. Freddie, Jack, Freddie Gatlin came in on his first drive, made some things happen. They had the punt coming back in, got another opportunity, is driven to pack down for their first touchdown since the Second quarter into lane. Again, and we said it earlier, not that Vargas was doing anything wrong, but the team just wasn't producing. And he had good numbers when they took him out. You put another guy in, and suddenly the, the synergy, the whole thing, the team has a different outlook on things, and the Wolfpack goes to a touchdown. That's the key of being in a team sport, that you have so many guys that you can rely on. Terrellock misses the extra point. First time this year he has missed. He has now made eight of nine, so our score remains a nine-nothing ball game here in the third quarter with 235 remaining. We come back, the Wolfpack will kick off. What's the matter you? Rocky and Bullwinkle, I saw. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yes. <clears throat> what is Gat? What are Gat's numbers? 7-Eleven. I think we were in that room today. Yeah, we were. large crowds. One of those rooms we went in for four hours. I know you do that all the time, but I don't. Well, you knew how to put the key in the door in a hurry. I saw you. <laughs> yes. Oh, again. Oh, again. I just bought a CD the other day. Yes. <laughs> We're back. University of Nevada leads at 9 0. There's the mascot, the wolf. He's got a smile on his face, or the wolves always have smiles on their face. Well, he's just wolfing, that's all. He's wolfing around. Fred Gatlin uh, coming in the ballgame, completing 7 of 11. Here's the big one. Tommy Matter on a slant in the end zone, and that's the first and only touchdown tonight. But the poise that Freddie Gatlin has displayed in his two offensive possessions out on the field has just been uncanny. Yeah, Gatlin on the sideline. He's happy with things the way they are. He's completed seven for 81 yards. Davis running laterally. The ball bounces and goes beyond him in the end zone, so they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. This is the point as a defensive team that you really need to step up your game just another level. We've seen a lot of inspirational football, a lot of flying around, hitting people. The linebackers have done a tremendous job. Howard, Porter, Bryant, they've been all over the field. Washington making tackles tonight. The secondary has come up with some big plays. Now it's time for that defensive line to gain some penetration, to get in there, to force the quarterback to pitch before he wants to and come up with that big turnover. James, we saw in our simulcast that Mark Weber was talking to the offensive front. They looked a little bit pleased with their performance as he was talking talking to him about what they're going to do next time on the field. The pitch to Danzy, Joe Caspers wraps him up at the 21-yard line first to get to him. Steve Danzy coming from right half, trying to cut back against the flow and ran right into Caspers. B Big Joe Caspers at his right defensive tackle position. The pitch goes back to Danzy. Joe Caspers right there fighting off his blocker, makes the initial contact with Tom Tanksley and Andre Howard and Xavier Carey coming in with the cleanup. Tremendous job by the front of the Pack's defense. That's the kind of inspirational play they're going to need the rest of the game. You know, just about two. Call it second and maybe a long eight. Wishbone behind Williams. The full house backfield. I believe that's Davis over the right side to the 24-yard line. No, it's not. Let's see when they unstack just who it is. It's Danzy, Danzy again. again. Yeah, Danzy again. So in two carries, he has a total of four yards, and we'll go to the sideline with uh, John Killery. I think John's done. What about Freddie uh, doing real well? Yeah, we'll get to John Killer when we can uh, as the Titans come to the line of scrimmage on a third and about six. 
Again with a double wing, two wide receivers on each side of the ball. Lone back behind Williams. Davis starts in motion. Williams comes back left side on the option. Turns it upfield, and at the 29-yard line, he runs into Xavier Carey. We have a flag down. What you're going to get, you're going to get an illegal block from Banks. The receiver was peeling back on the play, and he caught one of the Wolfpack defenders in the back. But excellent pursuit that time from Xavier Carey from his safety position because he came up and stopped uh, Williams just shy of the first down on the play. A little noise from the Wolfpack crowd led by the pack cheerleaders. Got to be happy with what they're seeing so far, although it's not been a clean one. Nevada leads 9-0 with a minute nine to go here in the third quarter. So Nevada will take the penalty even though they were shy of the first down. It'll be third down in about 16 to go now for a first down. Well, with the way the pack defense has been playing on this drive, you know, this is an opportunity once you back an offense up that they're really looking for a turnover. They've been a little short on those this year, and uh, they're looking to get one here because the way the offense has played the past couple of drives, they feel that they can get some more points with good field position. Remember the fact that the Titans, even though they got 13 fumbles in one game against Georgia, they fumbled it 33 times coming into tonight's game. And they've laid it down a couple times tonight already. They have. At their 14-yard line, it's third and 16. Williams drops straight back, throws out of the pocket, over the middle from McCrary. It's too deep and incomplete. And then uh, Forey Duckett lets McCrary know that he's there. So Prefontaine will be in one more time. But Forey Duckett with good defensive coverage that time, following the receiver across the middle of the field, Make an excellent break on the ball, and Williams laying it out on a post right over the middle, but Forey Duckett right there on coverage. Right there as the ball arrives, and the Wolfpack with that punt, with that penalty that they took, has Fullerton back inside the 15, take, making a punt. Yeah, Prefontaine from his goal line will do it for the ninth time. Good snap to him. He gets it off under some pressure, end over end to Reeves. Reeves will take it at the 47. Coming to the short side of the field, he slipped and went down at the 49-yard line, so we have just over 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Nevada maintains a 9-0 lead. It was 3-0 at halftime. The Pack got a touchdown to Matter and then missed the extra point, and you're up to date. And those two missed kicks tonight by Turlock. He missed a field goal. He missed his first extra point of the season. You know, he can't be too happy with his performance. He's had a kickoff that has gone into the end zone, but the Pack now has an opportunity to put some distance between themselves and Fullerton if they can come out and get on the scoreboard here again before time runs out here late in the third quarter. Fred Gatlin, who came in in this quarter, still a quarterback. Kind of taking, again, the, the impetus away from the defense. He slowed down that charge with his crisp passing. Gatlin throws, incomplete, intercepted. Gulo came up with the interception at the 30, or make it the 42-yard line. Right off the hand of the intended receiver, that was King. Daryl King had it, and it bounced up high, and Mike Gulo was there to scoop it up. He tried to catch that. He tried to cradle that one in with his arms instead of using his hands to catch that ball, and that ball went right off his left forearm when it went in because Freddie Gatlin put a little mustard on that pass, and Daryl King was out to the left running a slant route over the middle. Freddie Gatlin was checking off the line of scrimmage, dropped back, read the coverage, fired it right in, and King just took his eyes off the ball and interception. Yeah, I think he had more of his eyes on John Haynes, who laid a lick on him. So Gulo's interception gives the Titans the ball at their 43-yard line. Williams on a delayed pitch to Danzy coming left side. Lackey stepped up and met him at the 41-yard line. I'll tell you one thing, Fullerton has gone to that one quite a bit. They've gone to the well maybe one too many times. Well, that play was made in the backfield by Steve Bryan. He had met Williams about six yards deep in the backfield, forced him to pitch before he wanted to. So as we count down, five seconds remain, getting down to zero here in the third quarter is gone. Williams goes to the sideline. They want to talk things over. We've got 15 minutes of football remaining. As the teams exchange uh, sides of the field, we'll stay right here and get ready for the fourth quarter. James, people asked us when we came in the stadium, would it be a lopsided game or not? We said it could be, but it could be a game like this. We'll take a timeout. We'll return for the fourth quarter in the final 15 minutes right after this.
is long. We are back for the start of the fourth quarter. Fullerton in possession of the ball and uh, one and three coming in the pack at two and two. But the Titans have been tough tonight. It's not been an easy contest. Long count. Williams fakes the dive, rolls out left, sets up. He fumbles as he's hit. It's Casper's on top of it. Joe Casper's was there. Nevada's gotten it right back. Big play by Joe Cast was falling on that fumble, but Steve Bryan again coming from his outside linebacker position. He's had a well of a game here in three quarters this evening, rolling into the fourth, coming from the left side. Williams to drop back the pass just as he went to bring the ball up from his waist. Steve Bryan was right there, and you'll see Steve Bryan coming in clean, untouched from the left side. And just as he got ready to bring the ball up, make that Martin Washington. It was Washington 43. The I Northern got. Nevada product from Hug High School, knocking that one free for Joe Caspers. When Joe Caspers falls on it, you're not going to get it back. Well, he's like engulf and devour. Nevada with over 300 yards passing Fullerton. We knew they couldn't pass coming in, but they have a, a very scant 18 tonight. Gatlin throws a strike, and it's dropped at the 35-yard line. Mike Gullo was there to cover the intended receiver. And Gatlin was dropped just as he let that one go. They came free on a blitz that time and hit Gatlin just as he released that ball. Haynes, who's been active along with Godfrey this evening, two tremendous ball players on the defensive side for Fullerton. Tremendous hustle from both of them. But Bigfoot isn't loose, is he? Is that Joe Casper's on the sideline, or is that Bigfoot? He's lumbering on. They're trying to find out where the football went to. Hi, Joe. Got to feel good about that. Having his Gatorade. Three wide receivers left, second and 10 for Nevada. Gatlin straight back, throws again to Reeves. He's got it and wiggles his way inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. You know, think about Reeves. You don't really get, very often, you don't get a real clean shot at him. Well, with 13 receptions tonight, and you don't make 13 receptions in a game without with defensive players having great shots on you because you won't be able to get up from many of them. But Brian Reeves is not, like you said, has not been squared up on, on a hit, and he's gotten plenty of opportunities to run with the football this evening. Gatlin has him now third and uh, about three for a first down. Pressure from his right side. Gatlin steps up, delivers downfield. I think he threw it away. He had two receivers in the area, and I don't know if he couldn't decide or his arm was hit. He had Michael Stevens along with Senior down there. But Mike Allen came clean from his defensive end position. He was all over Gatlin as he tried to throw the ball, and he just didn't have the time. This is a position on the field where you're going to get Chris Alt going for it on fourth down. I think you are. He feels that his offense has developed some momentum. You know, that was just a little mental breakdown, letting the defensive end come in on the on the blitz, but they're going for it. Let's see what they do on fourth down. Four wide receivers in, two on each side of the formation. Holmes alone back. Gatlin drops to throw. Now wants a scramble, turns it upfield. He'll have the first down and more as he tries to get outside the 25. He's at the 20, loping to the 15, and pushed out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Gatlin with a hesitation step on the lope looked like he was going to fool the defensive man coming his way, but good individual effort by Fred Gatlin. Well, what he was trying to do was lower him to sleep, but Freddie Gatlin, a very headsy play this time. He drops back. Holmes gives him a good back block from his running back position, but Gatlin, most importantly, brings it straight up the field, not trying to get to the outside initially, but he brings it up. He breaks it back out to the outside. He tries to low one of the defensive blacks. Watson's asleep, and he steps out inside the, the 10 down at the 6. First and goal to go from the six-yard line for Nevada. They're on top, 9-0, 14 minutes uh, to go here in the final period. Gatlin fakes the delay. He threw that one away. He was trying to get it maybe to his tight end. No, he didn't have a tight end over there. It was uh, An Anthony Valentin who had slid off, or Ryan O'Donnell had slid off the line of scrimmage, but Gatlin just unloaded and got rid of it. Big break that time because that pass could have gone either way. You know, the official was right there, and he could have easily thrown a flag on it, but he, I think the pack got a break that time, got a little reprieve, but headsy play by Gatlin trying to get it away and save the sack because it's second and six at the six-yard line. Uh, this is one of those scoring opportunities you don't want to let get away. Goal to go. Gatlin steps under center. On a quick count, he drops back, throws the middle screen to Reeves, who juggles and drops. See if the ball was hit when Gatlin let it go because... Reeves slanting in from the right side to play that's worked effectively. We get a look at our KRNV News for Reno replay. Well, you had Haynes coming free up the middle, got a finger on it just right there as it was coming through the line of scrimmage, took some of the, the steam off the ball, so when it hit 
Reeves' hands had hit it light, and Freddie Gatlin's been firing it all over the field, so he just wasn't ready for that soft pass coming in. Third and goal to go from the left hash at the six-yard line. Gatlin sprints out wide. He's got plenty of room. He throws in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Was he out of the end zone? Singleton was there, and I think he had stepped beyond the line, out of the end zone. Excellent execution. Freddie Gatlin did the right thing, but Singleton had gone down, got loose in the back of the end zone, but he had stepped out of the end zone, untouched. He just lost sight of where he was. Freddie Gatlin got the ball to him, but he was out of the end zone at the time, but great drive by the pack to get down to where they had. So Nevada now setting up for a field goal, but remember, as we get a look at Singleton in the back of the end zone, out of bounds, that Vargas is a quarterback and he's the holder. Let's see if Terrellac We'll try the 23-yarder. Did he get inside the bar? He did. They mark it good, and Nevada goes on top 12-0 in the fourth quarter with 13:47 remaining. We'll back with a little bit of separation now, and we will return. We'll take a one-minute timeout. We'll be back to Titan Stadium right after this. Here's for inner broadcast audience. <laughs> Play level. I resemble that remark. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you know who said it early. This broadcast is intended for private viewing by the KRNV News for Reno broadcast audience only through an agreement between the University of Nevada and the Sierra Broadcasting Company. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or reproduction of any part of this game without the express written consent of the University of Nevada and Sierra Broadcasting and KROW Radio is strictly prohibited. You're watching KRNV News for Reno, your official Wolfpack station. Well, the Titans get a good return all the way out to the 40-yard line. So we talked about Fred Gatlin injecting some offense, Arthur Davis with a good return, and maybe the Titans can yet find their offense. They've been shut out so far tonight, and we're in the fourth quarter with 13.41 to go. Well, their best offense tonight has come via their specialty teams, either from the punt, Arthur Davis with the big return that time on the kickoff, but they have not been that productive offensively. They have no passing game for the most part of the evening. Their running game, if they've been able to get out on the corner, but the Wolfpack has seemed to have solved that problem. This is the best that they've played against a Veer-type offense in the past couple of years. 18 yards passing uh, is not going to get it done for you, especially when you're trailing by 12. You've got to find something. Again, they go with a wishbone. The full house backfield. Williams fakes a dive, and then he's going to be sacked back at about the 36-yard line. Big Jim Jones. Chipped up by Jim Jones. The Wolfpack playing with a little reckless abandon now on that defensive line. Jim Jones playing from his left tackle position, coming in freely that time on Williams as he sets up the pass, and Jones with a swim move right over the center that time, and Jones, Williams was right there, and he brought him down for the loss in the play. Hey, Williams has been rocked so many times tonight when he saw Jones right call coming his way. He just kind of ducked under and went down for cover. Loss of three, second and 13. Trendell Williams, the quarterback, again fakes the dive, pitches to the wide man, Davis. Got a good block, turns the corner, but boy, is he run into trouble. He gets to the 40-yard line, he's crashed out of bounds there, and it was Martin Washington who really put a shoulder into him. He put a shoulder into it, but Steve Bryant, once again in the backfield on Williams, right as he made the pitch. He's going to be a very sore young man in the morning, but Steve Bryant was right there, five yards deep in the backfield, forced him to pitch it a little early, didn't get the gain out of the play that they were expecting. As you say, he was driven down hard at the end of the run. So he'll get those four yards back. It'll be third now and just about 10 to go for a first down for Cal State Fullerton. Pulley Banks is split wide left. Williams will roll that way. Now he'll set up quickly. 
Throwing for Danzy, intercepted, picked off by the Wolfpack's William Lackey. Or make it for a duck it. Or no, it is Lackey. It is Lackey who comes all the way to the left side and out of bounds near the 30 yard line. I saw the two and I couldn't tell if I saw the other three or not, but Lackey with his second interception in as many weeks. William Lackey made a great read on the ball. They were running a post route over the middle. Xavier Carey had picked up Danzy, the receiver, going over the middle. Williams rolled out to his left, trying to buy himself some time. Tom Tankley was right in his face, made him loft it up high. William Lackey with a good break on the ball. Xavier Carey had the receiver covered on the back end, but great reading his blocks, returning back to the left side of the field, picking up some key blocks. Martin Washington laid a, a load on, on one of the offensive linemen coming down the field, but William Lackey with a great return inside the 40. Williams again trying to do something that his team doesn't do well and that's pass and they're getting desperate throwing into coverage and Lackey was there. Lackey running across the field had a lot of room before they finally chased him out of bounds. Well in the past couple of series you can see the offense offensive line gaining confidence here for the pack and let's see what they do on this series. Gatlin on first down middle screen thrown for Reeves boy it was awful lot of traffic that ball was knocked around a lot of people saw it coming and then Reeves and Gulo Boy, they go chest to chest and face to face. Reeves didn't like something that either Gulo did or said. Well, Reeves had dropped the ball when Gulo had laid the, li the lick on him. He felt it was a little unwarranted. Came in kind of late, which it was. But at this point in the game, there's some frustration with the Fullerton defensive players. They played such a tough contest. And that time he felt that, you know, he, a little overzealous and he bumped Reed, uh, Reeves a little too hard at the end. Nevada with no no tight ends in there. They'll go with a four receiver set. This is what they like to do, and Chris Holt likes to spread that secondary and get man-to-man -man coverage. So no tight ends. Gatlin will have to get rid of it quickly. Drops back, got pretty good cover. Out of bounds was a with the inbounds. I think he stepped out first. Stevens was tight roping the sideline. Did he go out of bounds, then come back in? He, he made the reception right. James, I think he went out of bounds, came back in. I think he had a foot on the line, and that's why they wipe it out. Well, what he did, he caught the ball, and he saw that he was stepping out, and he was trying to stay in and fall back over and get the first down, and the official felt that when he did that, that he had actually been out of bounds when he originally caught the ball. Cornell West has appeared back in the Wolfpack lineup. He'll go wide right. He'll be in the slot right as Singleton is the wide man. Gatlin getting pressure, scrambles out right. We have a flag down as he rolls right, looks downfield, looking in the end zone for senior, diving attempt, it'll be incomplete. We have a flag down at the line of scrimmage, but Fred Gatlin, again with great individual effort, rolling wide under a full gallop, machine gun Gatlin let it go, and senior tried to slide into it and just couldn't get it. You're going to get a holding penalty on this, but the receivers have been the part for Nevada that has let down the offense tonight, but great presence of mind by Mike Sr. going across the field with Freddie Gatlin doing everything he could to get open on the back end of that just came up a little bit short on trying to bring that one in but here you go, you're going to be forced with another fourth down situation if they decline the penalty or if they take it you know you're going to get a third and an opportunity to get another first down thing that we we didn't see in our, in our replay was Fred Gatlin again full speed sprinting out to the right and let that thing go about 40 yards downfield. He adds just that extra dimension to your offense that you always need to have. He's a two-dimensional quarterback because when he's not comfortable in the pocket, he can get outside and he can buy time as he did on that last play, allowing Mike Sr. to come all the way across the formation to try to get open in the end zone. I know Chris Alt, uh, who's patrolling the sidelines back and forth, probably will sleep on most of that flight back tonight because he sits right next to me and as much as he's walking, he's got to put himself to sleep. I'll lose some weight one. Third and 24. Gatlin pressure backside. Gulo got him and sacked him way back at the 42 yard line. Mike Gulo coming from the blind side from the backside was on Gatlin before he could decide what he was going to do. Well, Gulu came through free. He was able to slip the block of Holmes. He came in from the right side. Holmes stepped up from his running back position and missed the block on Gulu. He just went right past Holmes, and Freddie Gatlin had no chance on that play, and he was dropped for a big loss. And now they're going to punt again. It'll be Lester standing at his 30-yard line. And Banks way back at his 15. Good snap to Lester. Good high spiraling kick. Banks wants to return it from the 14. Looking for room. Not much there as he'll go down right at the 15-yard line. They may give him forward progress for the 16, but again, the Titans will start deep at their end. 11 minutes remain in the ballgame, and Nevada leads 12-0. 
Well, excellent special the team coverage that time by the PAX coverage team. They got right down on top of Banks, not allowing him to get outside the coverage. Everyone had their, their lanes bracketed down like you're supposed to, and they break, brought him down for a short gain on that punt. Bad field position again for the Titans offense at the 16-yard line, being behind by 12 with 11 minutes to go. You just don't have that big play capability unless someone misses a tackle. James, the Wolfpack flirting with a shutout. It's been nine years since they've done it. One shutout in the last nine years. Yeah, we've got the Titans taking a timeout. Something that they didn't have together, so they'll take a timeout. We'll do likewise, reminding you once again with an even 11 minutes to go. Nevada leads 12-0. We'll be back to Titan Stadium in just one minute. John Hinchman. Tell him to take his finger out of his ear. Hello, John. Take your finger out of your ear. Why don't you turn the other way, John? No, no, no. No, the one's in the back dancing. No, the, the one's dancing. Put him that way. Put his back to the wolf. We are back, and so is John Killerin. You know, Dan, you alluded to the shutout. There are a couple of marks the Packs are going. The shutout, they had one last year in September against North Texas State, the 72-0 drubbing at Mackey Stadium. Also, one other count, Brian Reeves, 13 receptions by our last count. That's too short of the Nevada single-game record set by Ross Ortega. So that's still, with 11 minutes left in the game, still well in reach for Brian Reeves. Good points. Williams rolls out right, throws, uh, juggled and dropped. And Brock Marion had a shot at, boy, did he take a shot later. His opposite number, number seven, McCrary, came over and Marion had his hands on it and then lost it. Then McCrary laid him flat. James, take another look at it. Well, probably the best pass of the evening by Williams, the quarterback. He rolls to his right, gets himself a little time from under pressure, fires it downfield, just bounces off his receiver. But Brock Marion just juggled it at the end. But McCrary came in and cleaned Brock up right there at the end. Wow, wow. Marion was looking like he was going to dribble that thing, and he went, didn't have his head up, and McCreary did. Well, Danzy looked like he wasn't that accustomed to a pass coming with that velocity to him and went right off his shoulder pads. Williams has only completed 25% of his passes tonight, and they're still at just 18-plus yards. He'll try to do it again as he sprints out right. Throws on the run up the field. He's got Banks. Banks turns around and drops it. Holy Banks did a 360, and I think when he did that, the ball may have been bouncing a little bit. He was on his heels. He had his hands on it, but... Couldn't squeeze it. Well, Banks had did a great job of getting behind Forey Duck at the cornerback. Forey Duck at looking into the backfield a little too long, had a combo coverage on the sideline, and he, he looked back and saw Williams, the quarterback, and Banks just kept running, and Williams laid it out. And if Banks had been accustomed to catching a ball, he might have pulled that one in across midfield. And Banks had to turn all the way around. I think that's when the thing started bouncing on him. But again, the Wolfpack almost that time victimized. They have been victimized this year by their secondary sneaking up, trying to stop the run, concentrating on the run, then somebody sneaks behind him. Well, that's what Duckett did once again. He looked into the backfield. Banks kept running. Third and ten Titans. Williams to throw. Now scrambles. And Joe Caspers is there waiting for him. Washington flushed him, and then Caspers did away with him. Washington coming in from his linebacker position, forcing Williams to pull it down and forced him up in the pocket. Big Joe Caspers lumbering in there, was able to drop Williams for the sack on the play. Another big play by this pack defense down in Fullerton this evening. Interesting, Fullerton's defense was the dominant factor early in the ballgame. Nevada has taken over that portion of the line of scrimmage, and they have forced Fullerton to do what they want him to do. Well, since the injection of Freddie Gatlin, there's been a lot of up-tempo play on both sides of the football. Prefontaine will punt once again. Reeves will take it at the 47. Got a good block. He's at the 40, 35, trying to get outside. 
He's only the, got the punter to beat, and Prefontaine finally pushes him out of bounds. Across the field, James, at about, what, the 13-yard line? He went out inside the 15 and about the 13. Great eyes, Dan. But Xavier Carey with the tremendous block at the beginning part of that run. Brian Reeves brought it in, let his blocking form very well in front of him. Prefontaine has been kicking well all night long. But Brian Reeves runs under this one. Xavier Carey peeling back. If you see from the top of your screen, just a tremendous block right there on number 83. Brian Reeves picked up the blocking as he got downfield, got back out to the right side of the field, was forced out inside the 15. Reeves looked like he was going down the diamond lane of the freeway. There was nobody in front of him. On the ground, Holmes trying to turn the corner left. He gives some ground. Now he turns the corner. He dives forward. Inside the 10-yard line, he'll get it to about the 7. We'll see where they spot it. But excellent run that time by Holmes. And the greatest, best thing he did was at the end of the run is that he dove and he stayed in bounds to keep the clock running with under 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The, the clock is an ally of the pack right now, but being able to establish that running game late in the game for ball control. It'll be at the 7-yard line, second and five from there. Cornell West is a lone receiver. He is going wide right. He'll match up with Watson. Gatlin drops, looking for West. West will not come up with a reception, and Darius Watson was shadowing Cornell. I think shadowing is speaking kind of light. That time, Freddie Gatlin double-pumped that one in the backfield as West was out on a look-in route, and he came inside and got a good block from Holmes. But Watson was all over West on the, on the outside there, got there a little quickly. Hmm. The suit would have been larger. They'd have both been in it. Yeah. So Nevada will have a third and five from the seven-yard line. Looked like he might have been a little smothered. Motion man is senior. He goes to the right side. Gatlin looking that way. Now sprints out right. Under a full gallop, he throws, and he just threw it away. Threw it to an empty area. Singleton was the closest receiver, but Fred Gatlin had people chasing him all over the field. Excellent uh, pursuit by the Fullerton defensive line that time. Seymour coming in on a blitz, untouched from the backside, but Freddie Gatlin able to elude him with a great foot speed. If you'll see Seymour coming from the right side, number 41 just came in untouched, and he was hot in pursuit of Freddie Gatlin, but Freddie Gatlin, very headsy, as you said, Dan, threw it to an open spot on the field where it would fall freely in front of Mike Singleton. Uh, Chris Singleton. Chris Singleton. It'll be a 24-yard attempt for Terrellac. From the left half, Vargas is the holder, kicks it wide right. It will not be good as he missed it to the right side. So Terrellac with spotty results tonight. The score remains the same, 12 nothing, in favor of the pack. And once again, the Titan defense uh, can sigh with relief because they've held the pack from scoring. You know, they, they stayed very close in this contact contest. The pack is only up by 12 points. Terrellac has missed a couple kick opportunities tonight at the field goal end and also an extra point. So he's not thrilled with his performance at all. But reminder, the Wolfpack will not be in action next week. In two weeks, we'll be down at Sam Boyd Silver Bowl, and we'll be back on here on KRNV News for Reno with that contest. The Rebels against the Wolfpack, the intrastate rivalry. The Pack goes down to take on Jim Strong and his crew. It's going to be the game that no one wants to miss this year. Absolutely not. For the cannon. Titans at their 20-yard line. Williams pitches to Danzi, running wide left. Boy, he's grabbed at the shoulder pads and ripped down by Andre Howard. Howard got a hand on him and wouldn't let go. Those linebackers have just been so active for the University of Nevada this evening here at Fullerton. They've read this, the pitch very well, and, and the option, they've been able to defense it. This is the best they've ever played against an offense like this, and they've just held it in check. The, the offensive productivity for Fullerton, even on the ground side tonight, it's not that great. So. Howard throws him for a three-yard loss. Second and 13. Frank Davis is split wide right side. As Williams stumbled back, I don't know if he fumbled or not, James, but he came away from center and just fell down. I don't know if he's chasing the ball or tripped. Looked like he might have got his foot stepped on by one of his offensive linemen as he tried to give the dive play inside. And as Williams tried to pull out, looked like one of the offensive linemen might have stepped on his foot and tripped him up. Very unfortunate break for Williams at time because the way they've been struggling offensively, they need all the breaks they can get. Gene Murphy, the head coach on the sideline, just kind of in disbelief, shaking his head. Now, what else can go wrong? You can just read his thoughts as he's held the Wolfpack to 12 points, a very explosive team at times, and he just cannot generate any offense. 
the pitch to Davis, trying to turn the right corner. Got a block, got another one, and he gets out over the 20-yard line. Davis about a step from making that a very long game. Well, that's what they keep hoping for, that they, they're going to get one of these backs to get him outside on the corner, and then he can get him one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back, and he can break a tackle. Davis did it, got all out of that run. He could get that time up to the 25-yard line, but stopped again by the Wolfpack defenders. So Prefontaine will punt for what, the 52nd, 53rd time tonight? Well, I think he's probably elapsed the number that he's wearing on his jersey, and he's, gonna, he's probably been the most busiest player on the team other than a couple of those defensive backs that they have tonight. Godfrey has probably been the only guy as busy as he has. Only 10 times, punting for the 11th time. Hangs it up high for Reeves, who calls a fair catch and will take it kneeling at his 42-yard line. And we will take a timeout, reminding you once again, we're in the final period, 6.59 remain, and Nevada leads the Titans from Cal State Fullerton 12-0. We'll be back in just one minute. You forgot all your exes, didn't Okay, make sure that we know what's going to happen so we can tell radio and we'll follow along with them. Goody, 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 goody. Is Paul Stewart still here? Once again, we are back in the Wolfpack faithful that are here tonight. We understand in the neighborhood of about 400, entertained by the cheerleaders and having a good time as their team is on top 12 nothing and has the ball first and 10 at their own 41 yard line. Fred Machine Gun Gatlin in relief in the third quarter gives to Diedrich Holmes and Diedrich's not gonna like that. No running room at all as Dan Godfrey came up and once again in the Wolfpack backfield dropped Holmes for a loss. Godfrey has had a tremendous evening coming up. A safety playing at the line of scrimmage like a linebacker and he's been a big hitter all night long and that time he met Holmes in the backfield for a two yard loss. The Nevada got to be happy with the fact that they most likely will end up with a W, but they've got to be unhappy with what their running game has done. The, ver the frustration of it all. Not much. Gatlin to throw on second and 12. Over the middle, guns a strike complete at the 49-yard line. It is Reeves, and he gets up limping. He's caught 14. As John Killeran said, he's one away from the record. Ross Ortega eclipsing the record of Jeff Wright who had caught 14 balls, Ortega with 15, and now Reeves with 14 of his own. But there needs to be an asterisk by that Ross Ortega record because that was in an overtime playoff game when he caught those 15 balls. Brian Reeves has caught his in a regulation play. We'll find out what Reeves' condition is. I don't know if it's just exhaustion or what he's limping, but we will get a report as soon as we can from John Killeran, who is on the sideline and keeps an eagle eye on those seams. Reeves will limp off to the sideline. You know he wants to be back in there. Again, another one of those Wolfpack players playing in front of his home folks. Yeah, you know, you get you don't get many opportunities to play in front of the family when you go off to college. And he's been very excited and, and out in his head this evening with the 14 reception. Third and two, and Holmes was sniffed out against by Mike Gulo. Gulo was on top of Holmes when he got the ball. Diedrich, no running room in the middle. You can't blame a back. If there's no hole, you can't go through it. Well, they're stacking eight men on the line of scrimmage that time, and Gulu from his linebacker position just blitzing, came in untouched right through the gap where Diedrich was supposed to run, met him two yards deep in the backfield. You can't fault your backs when they can't get to the line of scrimmage. Nope. Again, as you said, I think the, the key thing was Gulu was untouched. He just found a seam and ran into it. Steve Lester will punt. Good snap to him. He has time and gets it off. Banks calls for a fair catch as he runs forward and dives to the surface at the 24-yard line. Nevada's defense will be back on the field. 5-10 remain. It is a 12-0 score. The Wolfpack with all the scoring tonight. Remember, it was 3-0 at halftime. It was 3-0 it was at halftime, and they put 9 on the scoreboard here in the second. Might not sound like it, but a lot of highlights of today's game, and you'll see them all tomorrow at 5.30 on Running with the Pack with head coach Chris Alt and John Killerin. Don't miss it. Okay, 
Williams will remain at quarterback. Davis will split wide left, and with a full house backfield, you expect that maybe the Titans will go up top again. They pitch the ball to Smith. Jamal Smith running left side. He draws a crowd and will go down at about the 26-yard line. The pack defensive coaches have to be very pleased with the flow of their defensive personnel this evening. They flowed from sideline to sideline, making the plays when, when they had to. Reminder, if things go according to schedule, University of Nevada on its charter will be back in Reno at midnight. Which schedule was that? Schedule you gave me earlier. Said we'd be back at midnight. I said, got to be. Got to be. Well, uh, that was slightly after midnight. Slightly after okay. midnight. Somewhere around midnight. Brian Reeves uh, with his 14 receptions here in the game. We hope, hopefully enough that he's not injured where he'll have an opportunity to come in and try to pull in a couple more. Again, Smith on the ground, coughs it up, fumbles in midair, and the Wolfpack will come away with it. Xavier Carey took the ball right out of midair. Ball right in midair. Smith coming through the line of scrimmage, and the Wolfpack defender was able to get his arm in and strip the ball loose. And Xavier Carey right there as the ball came out. We'll see Smith coming through on a dive play. Lamont Porter right there in the hole and reaches in from the outside. And Smith just lets it go, and Xavier Carey pulls it in. I was going to ask you to analyze that dance when Kerry got up, but what was that he was doing on the way on up to the sidelines? Well, he was trying to remember where he's from. He said, do I have family here? Was that the other end of the state? Hey, he's from Vallejo. Okay, other end of the state. So Fred Gatlin is on again. Brian Reeves, that possible record setter, is back in the lineup. He has split wide left in the slot. On the ground to go to Holmes. A little bit of running room, not much, though, as they corral him once again. Mike Gulo is there. So let's go to the sideline and John Killerin. Dan, uh, trainers Tony Merrick and Cliff Wilson worked on what appeared to be a cramp for Brian Reeves. He was still limping a little bit, but goes back into the ball game. He seems a little bit stiff, but it was a cramp, seemed to be in the upper leg that they were working on for him. John, let me ask you this. Does the coaching staff and the people on the sideline, did they realize he's close to a record? I don't think they realize. It's the kind of game it took us, uh, took myself a while to realize it. I don't know, and plus, they're not in a position right now to think records. This game is still in the balance. A couple of big plays could turn it around for Fullerton. Okay, John, thank you. Gatlin back to throw. Looking throws underneath complete to Singleton, and he'll be spun down at about the 22-yard line. Vaughn got him. You know, it's very nice to see Singleton back in the floor of the game. He, he stepped out of the end zone on the one opportunity where he might have had to, to score a touchdown, an unfortunate break for the pack. But that time on the quick look in route from Gatlin, and Gatlin has really been getting the ball to his receivers in a hurry. The quick slant that time to Singleton, pulling it in for nine yards. Singleton's third catch tonight, and we get a chance. I'd like to get a glance at Gatlin's numbers. Third and one for the pack. Gatlin is 10 of 22, and boys, he's hammered as he gets rid of it. Was it a fumble or an incomplete pass? They're going to call that a fumble on the play. Looked like an incomplete pass. His arm seemed to be going forward, but the official behind him said it was a fumble. Yeah, let's take a long look at that again on our KRV replay. They've been blitzing from the back side all night long. Gulo comes through untouched, and he hits Gatlin. He did hit him before he could get the arm going forward, and just the momentum of the, both of their bodies forced the ball forward. But fortunately enough, it was recovered by the pack, and it's fourth down. And they're going to go for it. Fourth and six from the 27-yard line. Reeves in the slot left. Two wide receivers to the right side. Gatlin looks that way, throws to the underneath man, that senior. He takes it off the surface and goes out of bounds. He should have enough for the first down. He'll go out at the 20-yard line, James. That's where he needed to get. And just a great reception by Senior. Senior pulled that one off the top of the grass. Freddie Gatlin did not get that much on that pass, but he got it to Senior. The coaching staff is going to have to make some adjustments in weeks to come against this blitz that Fullerton has been bringing. They've been bringing an all-out blitz most of the evening and been getting great pressure on Chris Vargas and Freddie Gatlin. Freddie Gatlin has had a little more foot speed, so he's been able to elude it. Also a holding call. We'll take another look at the senior grab from Gatlin. Yeah, I guess we won't. Gatlin and uh, senior are still talking about it. But Nevada will make enough for the first down, and they'll tack on a penalty. Mike was telling Freddie if he gets it up a little higher that he probably can outrun everybody since he's, has a, he's had the longest reception of any pack receiver this year. Got to give him a chance to make some people look bad. I think Senior would say that, too, that he could get away from people. He read that article a couple of weeks ago in Sports Illustrated, what he's not supposed to do. First to ten for the Mike Senior play. comes off the field on this play, but... He, he has the, the big reception for, for tonight for the pack when they got in the field goal range early in the late in the first half. Keep an eye on Reeves. He is at the top of your screen. He's on 
Single set on the right side. Gatlin looks for him, throws in the end zone in the corner for Reeves. He's got a touchdown. Ryan Reeves with a touchdown, and Fred Gatlin looked away from his primary receiver, then went back to Reeves, and Brian with a big catch. That is what, number 15 for him tonight? 15 reception, and let's take a good look at it. On the fade route, post corner that time, Brian Reeves gave a little stutter step to the line of scrimmage, got past the defender, Fred Gatlin was able to lay it out. Johnson had nothing to do, nothing he could do about it. Great pass, great catch. Wolfpack up, 18 to nothing, looking for an extra point from Turlight. So Reeves may have been sidelined momentarily, but the cramps went away when you get a chance to catch it and tie a record. And he's tied that record he was there. in regulation that was set in overtime. Terrellac will try to add the extra. High snap. Vargas gets it down. Terrellac gets it up, and he's converted that one. So suddenly we have a 19-0 game with 2.25 remaining. We'll take a timeout. We'll return to Titan Stadium in just one minute. Trying to pick up what he said. I think he said we're coming home with a winner. Get another look at that touchdown catch, number 15, on the night as Reeves goes right by Vaughn, and Gatlin puts it right where he can catch it. That's what you need is a quarterback who can put the ball there once a receiver has gotten past the defender and get it to him in a hurry before the defensive back can close. Freddie Gatlin got it to Brian Reeves to tie the record for most receptions in a game. Steve Terrellac will kick off. Davis will have room to return it on the run, takes it to seven. 10, 15, 20. Through heavy traffic, we'll get near the 30 yard line. Boy, the Wolfpack trying to gang up on him. Got five guys around, they never do get him down. Finally, they trip him at the end and he goes down. We have a flag. Late flag that time, but Davis was struggling all the way to the time where he hit the ground. And the official has to understand that if the runner is struggling, he has to respect what the defense is doing because he breaks away and the whistle hasn't blown but it, the pack is hit with a personal foul penalty that's what it'll be a personal foul tack on 15 more 217 to go fullerton trying to find something they just like to get out of the scoring drought they're in yeah they, they would like to see a touchdown put on the scoreboard they've blown their only scoring opportunity this evening with a missed field goal in the first quarter and the pack has just held them in check ever since that point. The defense has risen to the occasion. The last time they touched the ball, Xavier Carey came up with the fumble recovery. The pack has been playing very inspirational football here in the second half. Fullerton at their own 45-yard line, first and 10. Full house, wishbone backfield. They pitch the ball to Danzy, running left. And there is Brock Marion. Danzy is... Uh, had the task of trying to get around Marion three times, and Marion's been there and up to the task each time. We have a flag down at about the line of scrimmage. Going to get a motion penalty against Fullerton. But Brock Marion filling again from his strong safety position, fighting off the blockers outside. And, you know, Brock Marion has been a very headsy tackler all evening, and Danzy couldn't get around the corner. Brock Marion dropped him for the loss on the play. He and McCray playing a little patty cake there, and he just pushed him away and went in and made the stop. They saw Roger Rabbit. That they did. It is a motion penalty against the Titans. I think the Wolfpack may decline it. They do after the loss, so take the down, make it second down. Well, they lost four on the play due to that excellent defensive play of Brock Mary, make that two yards on the play. But the pack defense is not backed off at all here late in the game. They've been just as aggressive as they were at the kickoff. Williams keeps it on the ground. Straight ahead fumble, and the Wolfpack after it again. They come up with it. Andre Howard got it. 
The boy talking about fumbling the ball as we were earlier. The Titans just cannot get a firm grip on it. Danny Pasquale. Yeah, Pasquale was the running back, a new running back, another running back, and he's hit and he coughs it up. Pasquale had an excellent run going, but Brock Marion again putting that shoulder right on the football. Andre Howard coming from that linebacker position, leaping over that heap there, picking up the fumble, but Andre Howard is down on the play after the fumble recovery. He's down on the play, and we're going down to John. And I just talked to Brian Reeves on the sidelines here before that fumble, told him he had tied the UNR record for 15 receptions in a game. He said he's going in to break it, and now Brian Reeves and Fred Gatlin will have a chance to set some Wolfpack history. Well, you can bet if Brian Reeves knows that he's tied the record, that he's all in Freddie Gatlin's ear talking about, I want a chance, but doesn't look like Brian Reeves is going into the game. He's on the sideline with his helmet off. James, just before, as you were saying that, Reeves was walking the sideline trying to convince Coach Alt that he needs to go in that game, and Alt keeps walking by Reeves and saying, no, you stay, sit right here. Let's okay. see if he gives him a chance to break it. Because you know Reeves will stay in his ear. He's not one of those strong, silent type. Gatlin on the ground to Holmes, and Gulo is shadowing Holmes everywhere, comes up to stop him once again. Reeves got on the field. Now he snuck out on the field, but yeah. he was caught. <laughs> he's out about the 40-yard line. Let's here he goes, here he goes. Let's see if he's going to make it out. Yeah, he got in the huddle, and look, the first guy he went to was Fred Gatlin. Freddie, Freddie, I need to rock. I need to rock. <laughs> You know that's what Brian is saying to him. He he wants this record, and you got to feel for the young man that hey, give him an opportunity. It's not often that you get a chance to break a record, and especially with 16 receptions in one contest. This is an excellent opportunity for him to go down in Nevada history. Clock moving with 1:15 to go in the game. Gatlin to throw, looking at Reeves throws, and Reeves had to go off his fingertips. Earlier we were looking at the sideline team physician Dr. Jerry Dales was tending to Andre Howard, who looked to, to be in some pain as he was grimacing and kind of bending over back and forth. But looked like he might have just got a little bruise or something on the leg. Reeves stays in the lineup. Took a shot in his shin, maybe. Boy, does that sting for quite a while. So Gatlin, you know, has been talked to by Reeves. Probably Reeves went in and called his own number. Oh, his ear's still ringing. Gatlin again looking left side. That's where Reeves is. He's got it. He's got the record. And he's out of bounds at the 44-yard line. So now Reeves can go peacefully. James, you, you're not planning on getting any sleep on that charter flight back because Reeves with the record now, you know you've got not getting any sleep. Uh, we've got to move him back by the engines. But Brian Reeves, you know, an excellent outing for Brian Reeves. On a square out route, Freddie Gatlin left no doubt that he was going to get the ball to him. And he put it on a rope where Brian Reeves could turn up and not only break the record, but pick up the first down and keep the drive alive. And with a minute four to go with 19 point lead, the pack has an opportunity to just run the clock out right here. Numbers on Reeves, our statistician Paul Stewart tells us 16 catches, 183 yards. Nice night of work for Brian Reeves. Throw in a touchdown to go along with it. Holmes finally gets some running room. He goes straight ahead over the 40 to the 39-yard line. Brian Reeves on the sideline enjoying his, his move into the Nevada record books that time with his 16th reception of the evening, flexing up a little bit on the sideline, showing those three-inch biceps. But Brian Reeves, you know, a very happy young man this evening. He's probably making his way over to John Killer, and he probably grabbed that microphone from him. Well, you don't want to give him that. We'll never get home tonight. So Reeves with 16 catches. Jeff Wright had the record for an awfully long time. I did that game at Idaho State. He had 14 and did the Ross Ortega game and had the privilege to be here tonight to see Reeves catch 16. Well, I had the fortune to play with Jeff Wright in my career at the University of Nevada, and he was a very fine receiver. Holmes getting outside the 30 to 25, a foot race along the sideline. Diedrich. He will go all the way, but did he step out of bounds? He was close to the sideline at about the 16-yard line, but Holmes finally getting some running room. Diedrich Holmes got outside on a very fine move, breaking through the line of scrimmage, and you got a feel for Diedrich stepping out of bounds at the 15-yard line, but excellent run. Diedrich getting the ball on a dive up the middle, reading his blocking, cuts back to the outside, picking up some blocking, getting outside downfield. Cornell West with a great block inside, and Holmes steps out. No one was close to him. He just stepped out of bounds. He just forgot where he was on the field. 87 yards rushing tonight for Diedrich Holmes. Came into the ball game, seven carries, a total of just 14. The second most productive game from a Nevada back this year. On the ground, Holmes running left side, inside the oh, 10. Trying to cut back, and he'll be dropped by Godfrey at about the six-yard line. That should wrap it. We have five seconds remaining. University of Nevada will get their second shutout in nine years. They got one last year. They got one this year, 19-0 over Cal State Fullerton. Here at Titan Field, University of Nevada will come away with a victory, their first road victory this year. Ladies and gentlemen, to preserve the high quality of the new Titan Stadium things, 
Well, a big, big win for Nevada on the road, their second Big West contest. They have to feel very good about this victory to walk out of here 19-0 win. But, you know, there's some questions that still need to be answered by the coaching staff. So both teams go to midfield and uh, congratulate one another. We'll take a timeout. We'll return to Titan Stadium right after this. Brian Reeves, you know, an excellent outing for Brian Reeves. On a square out route, Freddie Gatlin left no doubt that he was going to get the ball to him, and he put it on a rope where Brian Reeves could turn up and not only break the record, but pick up the first down and keep the drive alive. And with a minute four to go with 19-point lead, the pack has an opportunity to just run the clock out right here. Numbers on Reeves, our statistician Paul Stewart tells us 16 catches, 183 yards. Nice night of work for Brian Reeves. Throw in a touchdown to go along with it. Holmes finally gets some running room. He goes straight ahead over the 40 to the 39-yard line. Brian Reeves on the sideline enjoying his, his move into the Nevada record books that time with his 16th reception of the evening, flexing up a little bit on the sideline, showing those three-inch biceps. But Brian Reeves, you know, a very happy young man this evening. He's probably making his way over to John Killer, and he probably grabbed that microphone from him. Well, you don't want to give him that. We'll never get home tonight. So Reeves with 16 catches. Jeff Wright had the record for an awfully long time. I did that game at Idaho State. He had 14 and did the Ross Ortega game and had the privilege to be here tonight to see Reeves catch 16. Well, I had the fortune to play with Jeff Wright in my career at the University of Nevada, and he was a very fine receiver. Holmes getting outside the 30 to 25, a foot race along the sideline. Diedrich, he will go all the way, but did he step out of bounds? He was close to the sideline at about the 16-yard line, but Holmes finally getting some running room. Diedrich Holmes got outside on a very fine move, breaking through the line of scrimmage, and you got a feel for Diedrich stepping out of bounds at the 15-yard line, but excellent run. Diedrich getting the ball on a dive up the middle, reading his blocking, cuts back to the outside, picking up some blocking, getting outside downfield. Cornell West with a great block inside, and Holmes steps out. No one was close to him. He just stepped out of bounds. He just forgot where he was on the field. 87 yards rushing tonight for Diedrich Holmes. Came into the ball game, seven carries, a total of just 14. The second most productive game from a Nevada back this year. On the ground, Holmes running left side, inside the 10. Trying to cut back, and he'll be dropped by Godfrey at about the six-yard line. That should wrap it. We have five seconds remaining. University of Nevada will get their second shutout in nine years. They got one last year. They got one this year, 19-0 over Cal State Fullerton. Here at Titan Field, University of Nevada will come away with a victory, their first road victory this year. Well, a big, big win for Nevada on the road, their second Big West contest. They have to feel very good about this victory to walk out of here 19-0 win. But, you know, there's some questions that still need to be answered by the coaching staff. So both teams go to midfield and uh, congratulate one another. We'll take a timeout. We'll return to Titan Stadium right after this. I don't know, you tell me. Yeah. Right, so it'll be. What do you want us to do? I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. Okay, can we do a segment here, Don? He's talking, I don't know. We'll take it. All right, we'll do. All right. James, it's okay. We get confused. Oh. 
Well, James, the great thing for the University of Nevada, they have proven now they can win on the road. They're first in three tries, and they are perfect in uh, the Big West Conference. They have won two ball games. They get a week off before they go to UNLV. Very important that they were able to win this one on the road. And the second most is that it was a second conference victory. They get a chance to rest for a week before they have to go down to UNLV. Nice thing, too, is uh, we had a record-setting performance by Brian Reeves. And we're going to go wrap things up by going to John Killeran on the sideline. John? You know, Dan, a lot of great things came out of a game that got a slow start. As you said, Brian Reeves with the new reception record, 16 catches. Fred Gatlin in front of a lot of his hometown fans, Compton, California, got a chance to do his thing and come in. When the pack was only up 3-0, the pack put 16 points on the scoreboard. They've got a week off now to get ready for the UNLV running Rebels. They're 2-0 in conference. Things are going very well. The team's happy. Wolfie's happy. We'll see you again on KRNV in a couple of weeks. Hope you enjoyed today's telecast. And don't forget, running with the pack tomorrow, Coach Alton and myself at 530. We'll see you from Cal Fullerton, where the final was 19-0. Well, John, thanks very much. And the Wolfpack getting their second shutout in nine years. And John, James, this is one they needed to have because they have been struggling. They didn't provide a lot of rushing offense tonight, but the nice thing is they won, and they won handily in the second half. Well, they control the ball at the line of scrimmage with the passing game, and late in the game they were able to develop their running game. The defense had some fine standouts this evening. Big win. They get a chance to savor this one. They prepare for Vegas in two weeks. James, let me come back. Now, they used two quarterbacks tonight. They went back to Fred Gatlin. He was very, very effective. Do we see Fred Gatlin in two weeks? Uh... You know, it's going to be a question on that move whether Freddie Gatlin gets to start, but Freddie Gatlin has taken this, this team to another level. He's proved that he has the capability of coming off the bench and performing. He gave that spark on both sides of the ball. Well, we'll be back once again with another telecast. It'll be in two weeks. We'll be down in Sam Boyd's Silver Bowl down in Las Vegas as the Wolfpack plays UNLV. Final score tonight, University of Nevada, 19, Cal State Fullerton, nothing. Thanks for joining us.